get over here and have a conversation about Captain America, Sam Wilson, which is what we're going to do today here on the 238th episode of the Fake Nerd Podcast, where we're reviewing Mortal Kombat 2021 and having a conversation about a really good comic. Uh, I'm Sparks Witty, and I'm joined, of course, by my roommate, Ryan Eliopoulos. Hello. I am... Nope, I got nothing funny. Hey, go and next I'm also, person. I'm also joined by Brandon McClure. Hello. And uh, Ben Magnet. I am Ben Magnet. Appar- you got apparently, it, ben. apparently, when I do a deep voice thing, I have to compensate in the opposite direction afterwards. There you go. Oh, anyway, did you get that thing? I here we are. <laughs> <laughs> There's some nice it. gravel. Some nice gravel to the voice. Hello, Brandon. I got to see you today. What's up yeah. with that? How great is that? I got to see all of you today, and that was pretty great. We. Oui. Ben, what? you're here too. No, it's because I haven't seen him recently. No, no, no. Seen- no, no. It, it wasn't like, what the hell? Why are you leaving me out? It was like, no, I was like, oh, I, sh- sh- <laughs> I forget these things. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've seen I'll- you. I've seen you, Ryan, actually relatively recently. Yeah, that's true. No, I was just happy to see all y'all in person for the first time in months. Yes. Uh, for our li- for listeners and viewers, uh, we rented out a movie theater. It's all of our Instagrams, but we rented out a movie theater to go see the new Mortal Kombat movie. Um, surprisingly, uh, affordable, so we decided to do it. So we are, we're still being safe, and we all get to get get to see the movie together. Yes, and I highly highly recommend if if you're worried about going to a theater, <laughs> it is extremely affordable because I promise depending, you, depending, depending where it is, because AMC is doing it for twice the price. Okay, so the the, the, the medium scale theaters, like you can see your own movie with a couple friends for a, about the same price you would see it regular regularly priced. So like, don't be scared to go to the movies. You can do it. You can do it. Just don't. Maybe not AMC. It's too expensive. <laughs> Like when you see like the main price tag, and you might be like, "Oh God, that's that's a lot." But then once you divide it amongst your friends and everyone agrees to pitch in, it's like, "Oh shit, this is like exactly why we're paid to go to a regular movie theater." Yeah, we're not yeah. we're not we're advocating well. we're not advocating for one person to rent out an entire theater or for themselves. Uh, unless if you have you, that money, unless you want to, you do you man. <laughs> Absolutely, that's um, a baller. <laughs> that's check, this is still a free country. But right. if you want to, if you if you want to go see it with your friends, uh, I highly recommend that. It was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I want the headline: Man sees Mortal Kombat by himself in private screenings fifteen times. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Um, but we have some links, guys. We have some links. We Not, a lot. Have some... Not a lot. Not a lot. What about there... some Zeldas? <laughs> Um, I do not. I I meant to put up an article this week. I completely forgot. It's ready. I'll put it tomorrow. Um, uh, Ben didn't do an old school gamer, correct? I started writing one today. That's fine. And Ryan, you weren't on. You weren't on uh, downright annoyed this week. No, I was busy getting over here. Yeah, I did nothing for this (laughs) podcast as usual. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's not true. Because there is a fake nerds watch in the description below of episode five. There you go. Of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, episode Truth. I did uh, I did none of my own solo offshoot work. Oh, solo. right. Sorry. Um, so that's the link below where we talk about the fifth episode, the penultimate episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You can check that out down below. Episode six going up this week. Um, looking forward to that. And, yeah. of course, my solo series, uh, Conversation, went up this week. Every Thursday it goes up. Where this week I talked to – sorry, last week I talked to Helen O'Hara – from the Empire Pod, from the Empire Movie Podcast, um, which was an awesome experience for me. I was super tired in the episode. Uh-huh. You can kind of tell. tell, huh? No, I actually could not tell. You, I because I listened to the episode and you were saying it's like, look, it was early in the morning. I was exhausted. Time zones suck. But as I was listening, I was like, no, you sound fine to me, dude. Uh, uh, I I could only tell because I know you and I know what yeah. tired you sounds like. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little bit more. In the episode, I'm a little bit more ums, uh, ummy than I normally am. But I, I think it's a really good episode. Uh, she has a lot of really great insight um, uh, to things, and I was really excited to talk to her. So, right on, heck great. yeah! Um, and that's all. I, that's all there. That's all the description below. Check it out, guys. Audio visual people do that. Do all of it. Do the things. Who wants to go first of the week? Uh, I guess I will because I I I did a whole lot of nothing. I watched. Two episodes because um, Shout Factory, it's this great company. They put out a lot of genre stuff on DVD and Blu-ray, uh, mm-hmm. uh, some obscure stuff. Uh, they also have like a Japanese branch for like anime and manga and stuff um, called like, um, it's like Tokyo Shoutzu. And mm-hmm. they have most of all of Ultraman's uh, uh, TV shows free on YouTube through their YouTube channel. So mm-hmm. out of sheer curiosity, because I started to read the Marvel comic, which is, you know, a very Americanized version of Ultraman, I decided to jump in and just watch two episodes 
uh, two number one episodes of two different series, Ultraman Orb and Ultraman Geed. And uh, oh, those are like newer. Yeah, yeah, too, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. last, like, no, last like 20 last, years. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, I wanted to start something a little more modern so I can e easy my, my way sure, into it sure. instead of like starting Doctor Who like in the 60s. No, I you get know? you. I get yeah, you. Yeah. Um, they are two totally different types of shows, but involving the same stuff. And it's really kind of cool. It's almost like comic books where like Ultraman is like, is just like the world and like every show is a different type of genre. Uh, Ultraman Geed is very much if Evangelion was super positive and happy. This kid is chosen to be the Ultraman and to savior of the world. And he's like, I get to be a superhero. Yeah, what's my superpowers? Uh, he's kind of like Kato or something. Like he's really fun and active. Like he can't. He's so excited to be this Ultraman. And the Ultraman are like this like ancient species that were like guardians of the universe. Like it's got it's so much lore. It's very Dragon Ball heavy. Like and very not inspired, but feels like Dragon Ball with like them powering up and transforming. Uh, really a radical show. And uh, all the talk we've done with like kaiju movies that we've done and like big monster stuff. Uh, I really miss guys in suits. I really like like big monsters, like dudes in rubber suits. Ultraman is that to the brim. There are literally like a hundred Ultraman running around in costumes. And it's the silliest thing I've seen in my life. It's truly one of the most bonkers like out there concepts. And I'm so here for it. Um, I like, I chose, I like Geed more because it is the more fun, optimistic one. Where not that Orb's bad, it's just a little more dour. Um, but I only watched one episode of each, so that could change for either. But uh, really, really bonkers stuff. Uh, God is like an Ultraman with like a big white beard. Like it's just like it's <laughs> super weird, you guys. And the um, the first monster he fights is like a Godzilla knockoff, and he looks like Godzilla and like uh, destroy a merge together. And his his scream sounds like Godzilla's scream that's morphed. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's like a legal thing or or anything. In the original, one of the original Ultramans, I don't, I've never, I've never seen, it, I've only seen the clips. Um, yeah. There is a um, episode where he goes up against Godzilla, but it, it's not Godzilla. It's the '70s suit that they that they like welded a giant like uh, plant fan on the okay. on the neck, yeah, and yeah. it was just like that's that's. The blood, that's this thing and definitely not Godzilla. So it definitely feels like, cause uh, uh, I say Godzilla, it's mo it looks more like Destroya, but like if got if Destroya was like left in like, in like the bottom of a, a cell for like a hundred years and like, this is what the suit now looks like. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought it was really cool. And it has like Godzilla screech, but like, like twisted. Um, and it's just really fun, quirky stuff. So like, I'm probably going to continue to watch that, especially cause it's free on YouTube. Um, besides that, uh, I didn't do much. I read uh, Way of X, which is the new X-Men comic that came out this week. And uh, I'm really hot on the X-Men, obviously. I think it's great. Um, I think this is the best number one that, that's that been put out. Um, uh, if I can if I can get the glare away. Yeah, look at that. Look that, at that goober. Oh, Hell yeah. That's I from the that. old Ultramans. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get to that. because uh, Not a Godzilla suit. Not a Godzilla suit. <laughs> definitely <laughs> not. Gorgilla. What's that? Um, anyway, uh, Way of X. Uh, I think it's the best number one in the in the X Men line, um, and it can only exist by being two years out from the initial stuff, right? It is a book that is so dense with the questions that 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 need to be answered, and it is it's the book that that make that is the most critical on the on the idea of Krakoa. It is all about Kurt, who is a devout Catholic, and what he does now that that he that death is no longer a thing that he has to worry about. Uh, and it's a very, very introspective book. And it's supposed to be about like him building a religion, but it's not really about that. It's more about uh, all of these ideologies and like the the negative side effects, you know, like in issue seven of X-Men, uh, there is the crucible, right? And it was a very powerful moment of like recapturing like who you are. We see the opposite side of that where it's really cruel and it's really monstrous and it's really scary. Um, and, and there's a lot of that in way of X. It's like, it's the opposite of, of, of perspective. And and there's a lot of critical, like, it feels like somebody who doesn't like X-Men wrote this book, but not, but it's not. It's just like, oh, we need to be critical of the things we're doing. And Nightcrawler is the person doing that. And it's awesome, guys. It is really, really great. I highly recommend it. At least checking out the first issue. Um, It, it, it is fantastic. And Cyce Barrier has such a voice for Nightcrawler. Like, it's so good. I loved it so much. I'm, I'm actually looking at it. It was the next book I was going to read, but I, I, I had to go see Mortal Kombat today. No, I get it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a double size issue and it is packed and it's dense and it's, it's just, it's so juicy. And, um, it has a great cliffhanger, which reintroduces a character who's been gone for a while that we're all familiar with. Um, and it's just really, really cool. So I definitely recommend checking that out. I also read sword number five. Uh, now that it's out of, of the King of Blacks, uh, event tie and stuff, it's doing its own thing. Still great. Uh, Al Ewing is the master. Like I can't can't complain. Uh, I now learned the artist of uh, Valero. It's not Sheedy, it's Skeety. So now I know we know how to pray. It's, it's Skeety because I listened to a podcast about it. Uh, great artist. Uh, Sword's a great sword book. A uh, sword book. It's a great space book. Um, there's the snark war going on, and it's really funny to have me care about these weird reptilian people who I don't know anything about, but 
just Al Ewing knows how to write great character work, um, great characters. And that's that's pretty much me. I did some stuff with him that we'll probably talk about. Um, real quickly, Mag is in the chat. Hello, Mag. Uh, yes. de devout follower. I really appreciate okay. you doing this all the time, Mag. Um, he says, they did that to the other kaiju at the time, talking about Ultraman repurposing yep. suits. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it probably saves on saves on outfits too. I guess right, just color yeah. it up or something. Yeah, saves money. It's like they yeah. got this old suit that we don't need, so why not as well slap something else on it? Yeah. Uh, Sparks, do you want to go next? Since you're no, I think you want to go next. Oh, All I right. love you. Heck yeah! I didn't do a whole lot. Um, I've been I'm going out of town for a month uh, coming up, so I um, have been mostly focused on getting ready for that. Um, but I did do a couple of things. Uh, there's something in the news that we're going to talk about that made me want to do this. I watched Real Spe Real Steel this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, Hugh Jackman's Real Steel, and um, so it's it's Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, uh, Captain America, um, Anthony Mackie, uh, the Wasp, Evangeline Lilly, and a fourth Marvel alum, the little boy who plays Thor in the beginning of the first Thor film, is the <laughs> little boy in that movie. Yeah, that's funny. Wow. Yeah. Um, I thought that was funny. But that movie is about robot boxing, and it's excellent. I mean, it, it has no right to be as good as it is. Yeah, uh, uh, when when the news came out, what we're going to talk about, um, the, the love for that movie resurged. Uh, and it's nice to see that, like, pe no, that movie is good, and people do like that movie. Uh, it just, nobody really talked about it at the time, because, yeah. like, yeah. It, was, it was a robot boxing movie, so nobody gave it the credit that it deserves. Right. And I, I, I watched it. I've watched it in theaters. I've watched it a couple times since, but not in a while. Um, and I just, I remember sitting in the theater and cheering at the end, uh, mm -hmm. like I would at a Rocky movie or a real boxing match. Um, there's a, there's a bit where um, Hugh Jackman is like um, shadow boxing with the robot. Um, and he, and, and he does this thing where he jumps into the air and he like throws the punch. And so like, so like Adam throws the punch too. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I really got into it. It's a really great movie. I highly recommend it if you have not seen it. Um, I'm what, sure I think all of us have, but what studio made that movie? Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Okay. Yeah. Whatever streaming service Lionsgate is, get let's get a TV show out of that. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. man. I, I watched the shit out of that. I, yeah. I have always I'm not really a big boxing guy, but I really like boxing movies. They're probably mm -hmm. the only like sports films that I really enjoy that I like, keep coming to. Um, at least the ones that I've seen. I've seen The Champ, which is an old film. I've seen the Rocky films, Creed and Real Steel, uh, and a couple of others that I, I can't remember the names of now. Uh, but I've always really enjoyed them, and I always really I get spy. into them. Huh? I Spy. I Spy, Jeez. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy them just in general. So it's real Steel <laughs> adding. So it's an Eddie ben, Murphy movie. Ben, that's the movie where Eddie Murphy is a world famous boxer, and Owen Wilson is using him he's to try and get some spy stuff. Owen done. Wilson's a super spy because he's a world famous boxer. Is that movie good? Because I don't remember it being good. No. Okay. okay. I barely remember it. When someone yeah. says "I Spy," the first thing that pops into my head are like those little "I Spy" books that you open up, and there's a picture of like "I Spy." Yeah, it's an adaptation. Oh, it's an adaptation of that, Ben. Anyway, okay. so <laughs> real steel. Yeah, Rush Hour Clone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> For the audience members who have not seen Real Steel, I highly recommend it. I, I think it's an excellent, excellent movie. Two thumbs um, up. Yeah. Um, I went to the movie theaters again, not just for Mortal Kombat, but Sparks and I decided to go to the movies. We did. Uh, we saw Godzilla vs. Kong, which is my fourth time seeing it now. Wowzers. <laughs> True. That was my second. Th second and a half. Sometimes I just want to put on the fight. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. When you when got you, it on HBO Max, you 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 abuse that power. No, I feel you. You sure, really yeah. just have no other like. Uh, I want to watch Godzilla and Kong beat the shit out of each other for forty minutes. Oh yeah, um, just fast forward a hundred. Just fast forward almost seven hundred. Just fast forward like an hour and a half in the movie. There we go. Well, what was funny is when we went to see it, and we saw it in a fairly empty movie theater. It was all COVID safe. Um, the the fight ends, and this dude just gets up and leaves. <laughs> He's just there like. Were, there were, there were three other people in that theater, and the moment the fight was over, there were only two other people in that theater. He got what he, got what he wanted. <laughs> he was he like, was yeah, done. done. I got yeah. what I wanted. There's my um, money. I uh, I have not changed my opinion of the film um, since seeing it, so if uh, any thoughts, just I'll refer, I'll refer you to my uh, review a couple weeks ago. 
monster stuff looks real good on the big screen. The human stuff is all the more boring on the big screen, but all <laughs> I, the opinions basically stay the same. I was happy to finally see it on the big screen again. That was one thing I really wanted to do. Um, I, yeah, I read, I, I want to really quickly talk about Radiant Black. Mm -hmm. um, Radiant Black is Kyle Higgins' new book. Um, it's his creator own. Uh, it's top three for me as far as like comics go. And it's only three issues in. And I hope it stays that way. Cause I am constantly like, this is one that I like constantly, like it's like immortal Hulk for me. Like it goes to the top of the pile and I have to read it like the day I buy it. Love um, it. I really love that book. It's um, very heartfelt, very personal to Kyle Higgins, but it's also really um, upbeat in a way that like, you know, you wouldn't think because it's actually talking about some pretty depressing things. Um, it, it gets, a lot of things, I just remembered something that I did. It gets a lot of things right about um, what it's like being a millennial. Mm -hmm. um, just like the sad part of being a millennial, plus adding uh, a Power Ranger element to it. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's great. If you're not picking it up and you have room in your pull list, I recommend it. Um, I don't think I've even seen it at my shop. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Has, is it? Uh -huh. Cool. Yep. Perfect. I've seen every issue as it came by and I went, nope. <laughs> not not because I don't think I, not because I don't think it's good or anything. I ca I can't afford another comic. Yeah, that's what that's why I always say if you have room in your pull list, I recommend I recommend pulling it. But if you don't, you know, trade weight. Um, I caught up on Seven Secrets. I was six issues behind on Seven Secrets, which is Tom Taylor's new book um, mm -hmm. about there being seven secrets and the people who can uh, control those secrets uh, or keep those secrets. Uh, really good. Tom Taylor's an excellent writer. We're going to talk about him later in the news. Um, I. I, I didn't really, that book didn't really appeal to me at first, but I kind of picked it. I was like, well, I like Tom Taylor, so I'll just pick it up on a whim. Mm -hmm. um, really great. Uh, really quick read. A lot of fun. Question. What is the fourth secret? We don't know yet. Damn it. What's the second? We don't know yet. Damn it. You have to wait for issue seven. The only secret we know is... <laughs> ah, so that, that's the best secret too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Okay. Um, and then I read Sunstone Volume 6. As I said, I, I went through all of the Sunstone uh, Volumes 1 through 5 and decided to read because I wanted to read 6 because I hadn't read it yet. And that story continues to be good even though they switch uh, main characters in Season and, and season 6. Volume 6, they, they kind of talk about um, like friends of the main characters from the first five volumes. It's kind of this anthology, it's becoming this anthology thing that's supposed to lead into this big like event. Step on Cedric's too ambitious for his own good. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's written very well, with the exception that I think the format that he chose doesn't work. Um, he decided to change up the format for this volume, and I think he's going to keep it going. It's now a dual narrative between um the between two different two main characters um for the purposes of people reading the book it's alan and Anne. um i know that means nothing to sparks and ryan but alan um they so it goes from Anne's story and for a couple of pages and then it switches to um alan's story and the reason why he did that was because he initially publishes sunstone as as strips as comic strips so the first strip is Al is Alan. The second strip is Anne, and it does like that. I can see how that translates well in a comic strip format, but it doesn't quite work in a book format because the the you turn the page and you think the same person's talking until you see the picture of the person talking. You're like, oh wait, I'm oh, yeah, oops, yeah. I I messed up. I don't know who's talking anymore. Yeah, it's like you're reading it in the wrong voice, and then it's like, oh, gotta go back, different voice. Yeah, because you just kind of you kind of get lost if you during the transitions. Um, that said, it look the things he gets right are still here. It still feels very personal and very um, slice a slice of life in the way that that you can relate to it, and it feels real to your own experiences. I'm not talking about the BDSM stuff. Um, I'm talking about like the the uh, the other more real kind of um, uh, being with friends and things like that. Don't give me that look. No, I'm saying, Brandon. We, every time you bring up Sunstone, you have to say it's not the BDSM stuff. I'm like, I definitely, totally believe you. <laughs> I 100% believe that you are not talking about the BDSM stuff. Uh -oh. Not even a little. I've gone too far. 
Um, anyway, it's it's it, it's still it's still good. I, I still really like that book. Um, I think there was one more thing I want to talk about it, but that's fine because I will just move on to. I finished season two of His Dark Materials. Um, this is the HBO BBC series based on the three books, one of which was already adapted in the Golden Compass uh, years ago. Um, Daphne King's great as always. I don't really want to have three issues, uh, three episodes uh, left. And I decided to finish them. And by the end of the second episode, I realized that I was watching the same plot play out as I saw in Evangelion. <laughs> oh, it's not yeah. a bad thing. And I'm super into it. Um, into it. Like you take out, like it's not, I can't spoil it. Um, don't, yeah. Don't, Cause I'm on yeah, that. Eventually, it alone. eventually yeah. I'll watch it. Um, I really like that show and I'm really excited for season three. They haven't started filming because of COVID. Um, and that's a bummer. So I have a long, wet, long time to wait, but I'm, I'm stoked. Good. And that's it. Beautiful. Cool. Sparks of Ben? Benjamino? Benjamino. All right, I'll go. So I didn't do a whole lot this week, but one thing I did do that I'm very proud of is I got my second shot of the COVID vaccine. Huzzah. And, and I was preparing for the worst. Nothing happened. Me too. What, yeah, I, I took a day off of work, and I was like, my arm's sore, and that's it. <laughs> Me too. I but anyway, like, I, it is inconsistent amongst people. I have two friends right now who they got their shots yesterday both of them yeah uh and both are are feeling some effects they've got chills and stuff man um, everybody's different yeah yeah everybody's different they also got moderna and we got pfizer um <laughs> I, I it has seemed like there is a trend for moderna to have stronger side effects more like pfizer. moderna no uh, <laughs> i i what? definitely got like a, a crappy headache most of the day um but other than that i was fine Funny mm. enough, Benny got um, her first dose of the Moderna vaccine a little bit ago, and she had it, and she was at work the next day, and she came home early because she was feeling like chills and and body aches. Whereas, like, because I did the same thing, I took the day off of work, I got my shot, I get home, and I just like just chill, I take a nap, and I'm just like waiting, just like bracing myself for the effects to come. And they never show up. I go to work the next day, and everyone's like, "Oh, Ben, you're not dead yet." I'm like, "No." I'm I'm fine. Arms just sore. That's about it. And then I was fine. Beautiful. So yep. I was like, everybody's I, different. I mean, everybody's different. I had I had major side effects from Johnson and Johnson. So yeah, you did. I, I yeah. you know, and then it's not just like what vaccine did you get. It doesn't matter. Like everybody just reacts to it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom also got her second dose this week, and she just had all. She she wasn't like in pain or anything or having chills. She just said like it feels like my body weighs twice as much as it usually does, <laughs> mm -hmm. and just everything that she was trying to do the next day. She's like, my whole body just feels like it's weighed down, um, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. It, it just everybody's different. Uh, Medicine. A few weeks ago, my mom, she got the J&J &J one, but she also takes like this nutritional supplement thing called Juice Plus, and she swears by it, saying that that helped her out a lot, which which good for you. And But she was feeling fine. She wasn't she wasn't feeling too bad, whereas my dad, he took the J&J &J one, again, before it got pulled, and he told me it was worse than COVID because he actually had the virus too. Oh, geez. So he was like, yeah, the vaccine was worse than being sick itself. And I mean, luckily, both my parents are vaccinated and they're going to be fine. But it's like, yikes, it really is true. You don't know who's going to react to what to the vaccine. But I mean, it's, that's really been true of this entire moment, which is like, even if you got the virus, like your your reaction to it wasn't always consistent either. Yeah. Like, you know, there was no true hard line of like, if you're 30, you know, you'll react to it this way. It's like some people got yeah. so sick, they died. And some people like barely felt it. It's, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. consistent. Yeah, it's a, but vaccine, vaccinated. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So, so besides that, the other big thing I did this week is um, my girlfriend's birthday is this upcoming week. So as a little bit of early birthday present, we, her, myself, uh, our roommate, and a friend of theirs, we went to Knott's Berry Farm for a taste of the Boysenberry Festival. And mm. that, was that, was, that was nice. That was actually really fun. Um, the food there is awesome. Um, my room, they went to the, the Taste of Disney, and to compare the two, they think the Knott's one is better because the food you get is bigger. There's like bigger portions of food. Mm -hmm. So um, so have you ever been to like a theme park wine, uh, wine festival or food festival? You pay the, this one's like you pay a ticket, you pay for your uh, admission and you get like five free tastings. Two of those could be used for alcohol. And they, and of course it's like boysenberry everything. Like I, my favorite was the boysenberry brisket mac and cheese. You had um, carnage. Yes. 
If you don't like Bowie's and Barry, should you not go to this? No, the, about I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to be that guy. I'm just joking. Well, 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 Ryan, here's the best part. I barely tasted boysenberry in anything, so if you just like good food, you're probably not going to taste the boysenberry. Like Question. Thing. Yes? If you don't like good food, should you probably not go to this thing? <laughs> if you don't like good food, you probably shouldn't go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I'm not surprised that it's better than Disney's because Knott's food festivals are half their bread and butter uh, yeah. of what they do each year. The, the so. Boo Festival thing is awesome. That, that's great. Um, their that. their regular Boysenberry Festival. They were doing a food festival earlier this year to do to deal with the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, just opening it up and being like, "Look, come do this thing. It's simple because we can't put you on rides or anything right now." Mm-hmm. Uh, they're good at that. Um, I've mm-hmm. I've rarely had a a specifically made their food item I didn't enjoy. Yeah, I mean, eat, all the food that we had was good. I think the only food that I was like the most like, and this is an air, this is like the biggest air quotes possible, is disappointed in, was the Philly cheesesteak uh, French fries. Home said Philly cheesesteak mac. It's the Philly uh, uh, cheesesteak French fries, whereas it was like one section of the fries had the cheese, another section had the boysenberry um, glazed uh, onions, and then you got the cheese, and you got like the meat, the steak itself. And you had to mix it all in together. It wasn't like pre-mixed like you actually would a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. So that I mean, it was still good. That was like the one thing I was like the most disappointed in. But other than that, um, everything was like delicious. The desserts were so good. The drinks were really good. My first fun enough, my favorite drink wasn't the um uh, wasn't had nothing to do with boysenberry. It was a frosted Jack and Coke, which is a, a Jack and Coke slushy. Nice. Oh. It, was, it was really good. And I really yeah. enjoyed that. Right on. Uh, Real quickly, Ben. I'm sorry. I forgot one more thing that I that I missed. It's a quick thing, if you don't mind. I mind. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna no, do it okay. I'm, kidding. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Do what? What was it? Uh, I got. I started getting Zara into Battlestar Galactica, and I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, as I as I mentioned before, it's my favorite show of all time. Um, mm-hmm. Still is. Uh, I haven't watched it. I haven't rewatched it in, in years. So I I finally she said okay, and we watched the first couple episodes, season one. I forgot how good those episodes are there's an episode that does what falcon Winter soldier wanted to do so much better and it's like 20 years older uh is it uh uh is it about like silence and stuff no it's about uh it's about people the silence don't even play into the pl- to part it's about terrorists okay. um uh and 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 that and i really really i thought it was like wow this is way ahead of its time i am i am still patiently waiting on when i can get megan to pull the trigger on farscape yeah because i want to watch it again and i want her to watch it yeah, that's what I that's what happened with me. I was like, I really want to watch it again, but I also want you to do it with me. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I miss the shit out of Farscape, man. Yeah. One of um, my proudest achievements was getting Fanny into Avatar Last Airbender, coming mm-hmm. home from work one day and finding out she finished all of book one. Nice. Uh, she only had the season, she only had the last two episodes of the first book left, and I'm like, still waiting. I got her, um, boys. Yeah, but anyway, that's the last thing I wanted to bring up. I apologize for interrupting you. That was a glad to get. Um, I'm so excited to watch the rest of that with Zara. I can't wait. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, Boysenberry, uh, Boysenberry Festival was fun. We uh, we came home, took the biggest nap in the we were in the biggest food coma, and besides that, just played a little bit of video games here and there. Went to work. Um, continued playing Super Mario 3D World. We're at the secret, the like the secret worlds now. The super hard levels. That's fun. And that's about it. Nice. And then I went and saw Mortal Kombat with you guys, and also we watched Falcon War Soldier. We did a thing about that, and here we are. Yeah. yeah. Sparkles. When I played a video game this week, it was it was mostly Fortnite, um, because other people were playing it, and so like when I had an avenue or I or I just needed to stop looking at schoolwork, I'd be like. Yeah, I'll hop on for some Fortnite. I want to do that. So I broke level 100 this t- today earlier oh, today, nice. um, which is great. That's, uh, all, that's all. That's some play. This is the this is the earliest in the season that I've ever done that um, by a long shot. Uh, so I think I hit like I, 38. I've, yeah, I've, I've, I that that really was a mile marker for me of how much time I put into it. Um, but I also think I've taken advantage of like a lot of quest experience at the right time with the supercharged boosts and all that. Yeah, kind I of, leveled up like like eight times today. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. Um, uh, but I wanted to highlight that I I had this downtime after someone someone else quit and I was by myself and I decided to do this really stupid task, which is that I pissed off some sharks and I was just trying to get them to jump at me on top of a gas can that I would then blow up, and it was a lot harder to coordinate than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I just, sometimes it's nice to have a game where you can just do dumb stuff like that. Fortnite's great <laughs> for that. And I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Anyway, I also finished The Good Place. This has been a long week. Um, I finished The Good Place pretty much at the beginning of the week because we were we were right at the end anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, that show's great. Uh, I have no complaints. That show, I'm glad that show was the length that it was because I, I don't feel like anything was ever drawn out. I, uh, I remain entirely impressed that that show constantly reinvented itself. Um, uh, I, I enjoy that show. That show is good. What did you think of the ending? Uh, I really like the ending. One aspect of it didn't sit right with me. I can't say it cause it would be a spoiler. Yeah. Right. Don't. Um, but, but like there's, there's one aspect of it where I was like, that kind of feels like slightly unacknowledged, but okay. You can, um, you can text me about it. Sure. Uh, a new chapter of Dragon Ball Super came out, and I like it, but I also kind of don't, and that's where I'm at right now, and it's because I, I'm 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 not crazy about the arc we're on, as far as uh, whoa Emma, she just like really tilted our lamp. Um, as far as the bad guy, mm-hmm. um, is it not Moro anymore? No, Moro's done. We're on the new guy. His name's no, Granola. G- Granola bar. Granola. Hell yes, I love it. <laughs> Comes from the planet cereal. Oh, <laughs> you're the best. Um, they they're bringing back elements from from the previous arc that are pretty cool, uh, and I like that stuff. And there's this whole concept of like a a major gang that was running the galaxy essentially very quietly, and then Frieza showed up and kind of ruined it. Mm. And they're trying to aim this dude at Frieza, but in the right way. And part of that means that they have to make him fight Goku and Vegeta. And the the means of forcing these two into conflict is what's like bumming me out. Cause I'm like, this is this is really it feels like forced filler of like, I know that this guy won't really want to kill them once he gets to know them. Mm-hmm. And I know these two won't really want to kill him once they get to know him. But we're gonna have to go through the motions of like several chapters of getting to that point. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Ugh. Uh, but they're doing still cool development stuff with Goku and Vegeta. Vegeta basically got his blessing from Beerus to start working on his God of Destruction potential, which is dope. Ah, nice. um, uh, it's really cool because Goku is now only being trained by Whis, and Vegeta is only being trained by Beerus. That's dope. Um, We've talked about it a bit, but that's so cool. I'm so glad they finally put the two on tr- on different trajectories instead of Vegeta always trying to chase Goku. Yeah, Vegeta's trying to find his own way to greater power, which I think is really dope. Yeah. Um, uh, I We started a new anime this week because we finished Dr. Stone. It's called Vivi. Um, it is interesting. Uh, I We're one episode in, so I don't know how sold on it entirely I am to say if it's great or not. The concept is cool. The concept is, uh, and Brandon, we only watched one episode, so if you want to jump in. Yeah. Um, but Vivi is uh, V-I-V-Y for anybody looking for it. Um a uh uh there's this like picture like disneyland in a sense of an entertainment complex that uh has like westworld operational ai Mm. and those those android ais uh end up going berserk and murdering all the people Uh and one of the drone robots that works there that's like a floating drone robot uh teleports back a hundred years as part of a a mission to Mm. stop this from happening and so finds and and explains what's happening to the very first uh, the very first AI. Okay. Uh, like sophisticated. Is one. time travel just like a normal thing that just exists? It's not clear. Okay. How how that happened yet? Um, so this drone rob- robot ends up taking over the body of a stuffed bear uh-huh. to interact with her. But she is uh, she was designed to bring the world happiness with her singing. That's her AI design. But now it's also you have to stop what eventually leads to the AI apocalypse for human beings. So it's Terminator. Um, it's, it's interesting in its setup, uh, but I can't say whether or not it's good yet. So we'll, we'll see what 20 minutes. Um, yeah. 20 minutes, you know, typical anime. Uh, I did some CW catch up. Um, that involved the flash and Batwoman. I wish it was Superman and Lois. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, real quick. Superman and Lois, uh, for anyone who's interested um, it's if you have HBO Max, the five episodes are going to be on HBO Max soon uh, oh, for you to catch it. Watch so it. So if you want to watch it and not have to worry about commercials like you would on the CW app, 
than watch oh on my HBO God, Max. I can't tell you. Uh, it's five episodes that are going to be there before it returns. Yeah, having those apps or having those commercials on that app was terrible. I, I, I mentioned I'm going home. I'm going uh, up north for a month, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be on the queue. <laughs> uh, I gotta do something when I'm when I'm up there. Beautiful. Uh, close enough. I finished it. Uh, Megan right. and I finished it. Good I season. A few episodes of those for close enough. Uh, really weird last episode for the season, but good good season. We 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 didn't really get to starting a new show, so we we not really, and so we we caught up and finished close enough, and that's that's solid. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, you can check out our fake nerds watch. We watch the finale, we talk about it. It's great. Up soon. Uh, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, as Brandon said, went and saw that again. Um, Megan and I did set aside some time to play a video game. We played It Takes Two. You oh yeah. Um, if you don't remember, this is uh, this is the one where uh, you are the parents of a girl and you're getting a divorce and she wishes for you guys to stay together. And so your souls are transported into her dolls that are modeled after you. And you have to work together to get back into your human bodies. And through doing that, it's basically therapy for your relationship. Um, really inventive. Uh, we played all the way through what is basically the first section all the way up through the first boss fight. And, in, and about, I'd say probably halfway into the second section. Uh, and the second section is super cool because uh, I'm playing the dude, she's playing the girl. And um, you get, she gets a talking hammer head, like just the head of a hammer that she's using. And I get nails that operate like Yondu's arrows. And that's sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I put them places and then I call them back with whistles and it's super inventive. I'm um, glad you played that game. That game looked really fun. That game is really fun. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the mechanics. Megan is doesn't play a lot of video games with rotating camera style. So she's adjusting, but it's, it's cool. I like that game. It's inventive. Nice. Um, watch invincible. Uh, I, I I'm not that. gonna, I did that too. We did that. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it because we'll talk about it somewhere else in the near future. Um, so watch this space. Hey guys, if you're not watching invincible, please, you need to do it. Mom like for real moments ago, uh, just hours ago, Ryan and I decided to pick Titans back up mm -hmm. because we were four episodes from the end of the season and we felt like we should just finish it. Because that season three's coming and like they're introducing a lot, a lot of like new comic book characters like Babs and like the Red yeah, yeah. Hood. And I'm like, I'm interested in that. Right. Because everybody except Rachel and Gar have been handled pretty well on the show. Yeah. So we watched an episode and I continue to feel that Rachel and Gar are still the weak parts of that show and they're the weak parts of this episode because that's like half of the episode. Yeah. So, but that's Titans. Um, but there's also great stuff like Crypto and Connor yeah. and Dick. Dick's this wasn't Dick. the best episode for Dick. Dick has is in a weird arc where he, where he so just really wants to punish him. Spoilers for Titan season two. That's been over for a while. Like Deathstroke basically tells like, like Dick, Hey, you need to like leave the Titans alone or I'm going to kill them. So Dick gets himself put into prison. Uh, so now he's just in a prison arc where he's dealing with that feeling sad for himself. But then he discovers like he, he like, he likes his cellmates and like, they might be the inspiration for why he turns into Nightwing, which is kind of weird. <laughs> Cause they literally draw like a Nightwing. They literally draw his symbol on the wall. And like, it's like, it's like something to do with like, in like an old and religious. He's not, and he's not Nightwing yet. So. No, no, uh, mm. Oh, it's wow. just like you know, like the nightly symbols on a wall that some dude carved into the wall in prison, and Dick's just like looking at it, like, "All right, <laughs> okay." Uh, two other things. Um, Megan and I caught up on the new season of Everything's Going to Be Okay. This is the freeform show I've talked about before. Uh, it's back. It's been back for a few weeks. Um, there are four episodes out. Uh, my friend Kayla is one of the stars on this. I'm really proud of her. She's doing great. She was just interviewed for People Magazine, which is awesome. Nice. Um, she's doing incredible work. Uh, um, she's really great. Uh, this show is cool because obviously this just came out. They filmed this show during the pandemic. They filmed the show during the pandemic because the entire season is set in the pandemic. These people are in lockdown. Um, the season picks up uh, a few, like barely two months into the pandemic where we were um it's really interesting the way that they incorporate that it makes a lot of sense because these characters were based around how they function as a unit in there now they're just all shut in at home um and they they were the main four were already all living in the same house so it doesn't change a lot mm -hmm. uh but they're but now the way they interact with people are over phones or like social distance gatherings for specific things and that kind of stuff uh it's good it's really good um i i haven't watched a lot of shows tackle try to tackle the pandemic or incorporate it, but it really is interesting and cool here, especially because you're dealing with 
a character who is autistic and the people who are who love her and are with her uh and what having to be kind of trapped in the shut in at home routine does mm, okay. uh on that on that scale and like how that affects both sides of that um and they're really good at this and I, again like i reiterate like no show has characters that sound like these characters to me because these sound like real people like like in a way that i i'm inter- eternally impressed with um they just sound like real true people that i'm just watching and that that rarely happens with television so flawlessly as i feel it here um they just did a really interesting episode where the younger sister it has decided in her downtime that she now wants to become a, a video vlogger and she's nervous about how to navigate that world and how to put up your first video and, and the feelings around that and that kind of stuff. You, so should, I really, you should tell her about the Fagner podcast. So I really, really, uh, really recommend it. Really like it. It's 20 minute episodes. You can breeze through the first season that's available on Hulu. The second season is also up. Um, it doesn't air with commercials because it's free form on Hulu. So you, you just watch the show. Mm-hmm. Um, Recommend it, guys. Uh, not just because my friend's in it, but that that's also a reason. Um, last thing I want to talk about is we also watched a movie on Netflix that's called I Care A Lot, which is starring Rosamund Pike and Peter Dinklage. And I wish I cared more for I Care A Lot. Um, that's the headline on this review. Uh, it's... it's <sighs> so, um, it's really hard to watch there are plenty of projects i can think of where the protagonist is the villain or a bad person where i'm still cool with watching them following them as a character this one is not one of those i cannot at any point in this movie and neither could megan root for rosamund pike's character because she is so terrible um and there's just no reason to want her to succeed while she is facing a a crime boss like I, I don't know I, anything about this movie. Can you give me the like a two sentence synopsis? Marla is she games the system of our medical health care to make sure that they spot all the elderly people who have a lot of insurance money and high health, and she coaxes doctors to hand them over to her with a cut of the benefits from getting their insurance money, so that they take a case to a judge, and the judge will then say, "You now need to be the legal guardian for this old person." That gets them put into a home. She then gets to decide that they are separated from their family. She has complete control of all their assets. She sells their homes. She sells off all their stuff, and she says it's for the benefit of paying for their care. But really, she's putting the money into her pocket and the pocket of the institutions that she's greased the palms of in order to make this happen. So she's a terrible and she has person. A wall <laughs> of 40 elderly people. And anytime she loses one of them and they die, she goes, shit, we need to get a new person in there right away. Hot dog. And that's what this is. But in the movie, she uh, she thinks she's found the perfect person because she has no family connections and all that. Turns out that was actually a front because she is a crime boss's mom. And so she really stepped in it. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, But she is so boldly brazen about how, how confident she is in herself that she refuses to admit when like things are going bad. She ends up getting a lot of other people killed because of her choices and things like that. Uh, and just at no point can you root for her. It's, it's so gross and upsetting what she does that you cannot root for her. Um, and the movie in some ways punishes her, but also in some ways rewards her. And I'm like, mm. I cannot. Uh, and there's a whole other side to this where like, there's an angle and I read some stuff where they were talking about it, that what they want to do is prove that like, women can be cool, bad guys as well, that kind of thing. And so there, there is this era. So there's this dude at the beginning of the movie who's like, a, uh, basically feels like an amalgam for a Trump supporter. Um, oh whose mom has been taken from him by her. And so he says horrible things to her. But you also understand that she has been blocking him from being able to see his mother for three years. And I'm like, I, that's so weird of a situation to put me in to like hate everything he's doing, but also totally understand that you have blocked him entirely from seeing his like, mother for, for three years. Like who, yes, exactly. And it's like, and and the way that she talks down to him is supposed to be about like a feminist taking a stance kind of way. That's what she uses. She, and her skill, by the way, Rosamund Pike, if you've seen it, she's basically playing the same character from Gone Girl. Uh, that's her performance level. It's pretty much the same. Um, Sinister. Yeah. And, uh, but the, but the angle is that like her skill is just that she is constantly underestimated because she's a woman and that's why she's able to do, to be so good at things. That's her skill. Uh, not a character trait skill. And I'm like, eh, 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 this, 
this mm. really a confusing way to like say empowering women and she's literally the most reviling person in the movie and i'm like that's so weird and uh this is why i talked a bit about on fake nerds watch that like i kind of compare the sharon carter thing where i'm like there's something like mishandled in like the we want to make like a cool like ladies can be cool bad guys too and i'm like i fully agree with you but like you can't make them so freaking unlikable that that like i can't even enjoy them being on screen which is how i feel like i was just waiting for her to die and that's that's a crappy way to watch a movie um gone girl it was uh, that that was that's rough um like and and i think also it's just hindered so much by the fact that like what she's portraying is is real. It happens. This is this is real thing. There's a yeah. there's a woman who was taken to court because she had 450 cases of doing this to elderly people. Oh my goodness. Um, Jesus. Yeah, uh, like this is this is grossly upsetting because it's true. And then you're just watching this person reap the benefits of it for the whole film. And I'm like, oh no. Um, and it's really a bummer because there was an opportunity to maybe play that bad girl angle better for the feminist angle because the mom is really talented. I haven't seen this actor in anything else. Uh, but she's really good here. And she she bites right back at her and she's like, oh, you're gonna die. Uh, kind of kind of shit. She plays like these good levels. And then they just tr- stop showing her halfway through the movie. Right. Um, they instead focus on Rosamund Pike and other stuff going on with her. And I'm like, oh, you, you missed the thing that was so good about her interaction with her in this movie. And it's just gone. I don't sure. recommend I care a lot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, but that's it. That's, I got that's, I got enough to watch. I'm that's, good. That's my week. There we go. Uh, all right. Shall we get into our bread and butter then? Yum, yum, in my tongue. Yum, yum, in my tongue. Butter. We did it. Mm, we're here again. Butter. Bread and butter. Real quickly, we're not going to talk about the Oscars. Um, we didn't see 97% of those movies. So, <laughs> like, also, let, let's be the, real. The, I, yeah. I completely yeah, forgot about the Oscars because it like I was only caring about Mortal Kombat today. That yeah. was all I cared about. I was gonna see you guys in person, and then it's like the Oscars. I was at work and the news was on. It's like the Oscars are on Sunday. I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I'm similar wow. to the situation. I'm like, wow. I don't care about the Oscars this year. I want to watch Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's difficult this year because it was a pandemic year. A lot of these movies were not. We were not able to see them, um, and it's really just stuck up on us. But congratulations to all the winners. Uh, I heard it was a shit show again. So. Uh, extra shit show of this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. But we were going to talk about some comic book adaptations. Some comic book movie movie stuff. Hey, that's, this is the bread and butter. Um, Russell Crowe is playing Zeus in Thor Love and Thunder. Boy, he let that drop like Alfred Molina. Yeah. <laughs> he saw what Alfred did. And he's like, oh, I don't have to be coy about this. <laughs> Um, but he, he, he's gonna start hiring real snipers. They made that joke for years. He's gonna start doing it. He's gonna start getting a guy to at least put the laser pointer out so they start thinking. Wait, they have the they have the predator rights now. It's gonna be the three dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, Gore is gonna go up against Thor. Uh, um, Zeus. So um, they're taking inspiration from obviously like the mighty Thor when Jane Foster Thor, but also obviously from Jason Aaron's the beginning of Thor with God, the uh, Gore, the God butcher and the God bomb arc and all that stuff. And Gore's whole thing is like he, the, the gods failed him and his people died. So he goes on a God killing spree and he kills all the gods in the universe. Um, so whether like he fights Zeus and Zeus dies or just like, this is the beginning of the introduction of a new pantheon of stuff. Like that's what I love about Marvel and DC. Like they all like all the myth- mythological gods of all the, all the different cultures exist. We just don't see them very often. I can um, totally see this being the opening, the cold open. Uh, we see Gore go- kill Zeus and then Thor love and thunder. And then. That's yeah. The- yeah. I, I certainly hope it's, it's, a, I think it's, I hope it's more than that. Um, well, he said cameo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's okay. That's a good point. Um, man, I'm just that's just the fact that it's that it's Zeus means that like um, Hercules is around the corner if they're gonna do that. Um, mm-hmm. Eternals has Gilgamesh, which is the inspiration for Hercules in modern mythology, but there, it doesn't look like they're gonna go that route with the comics because like they'll just make Hercules a different character, which is cool. Um, but Zeus is coming, baby. That means Greek gods are coming. That just opens up literally hundreds of new comic ideas that they can pull from. It's, yeah, it's great. Hell yeah, it's it does. For Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm so excited for that, and just Russell Crowe, he's he's a goofy guy. Okay. Um, Secret Invasion news. Oh, Sharon Carter? <laughs> no. no. Thank goodness, actually. Yeah. Um, Olivia Coleman and Amelia Clark are in talks to join the series. 
bro. Boy, I hope so. Talk about a powerhouse of, of two two great people. Yeah, Olivia Coleman, like specifically. No, no offense to Amelia Clark, but like, like the the, the queen, the queen. What's the movie called? The favorite. The favorite. Yeah, uh, the movie rules. She got an Oscar for that. She's so delightful. Um, she can be anybody. She's made it very clear that she wants to be in this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I hope she gets it. Uh you know, everyone's like pointing fingers, like, oh, it, they're casting for the Scroll Queen, and I'm like, if it's either of these ladies, like, cool. Yeah. Or they're just whatever, but like they're great actresses. They're great. I mean, actresses. I really, I really like the show. They also said uh, they've also let it slip that Captain Marvel two will be a launching pad for the series. So whatever happens, Captain Marvel two is going to lead into Secret Invasion. All right, that makes sense, I guess. Sure. Which kind of gives us an idea of how far away <laughs> that show is. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and then off the back of Falcon Winter Soldiers uh, series finale, Captain America four was announced. Good. Um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier showrunner Malcolm Spellman and staff writer Dallin Moosen will write the script. Uh, I definitely talked about it on Fake Nerds Watch, but I really wish that this wasn't two of the white guys only from the writer's room of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Are they, are they definitely both white? They I are they're definitely they're both white. I looked it up. That's a, yes. that's a big old bummer. Um, yeah, that is uh, a rare slip up for Marvel when it comes to something like this. They generally are trying to be more inclusive uh, behind the camera as well. Luckily they haven't said the director yet. So yeah, right. ho hopefully they can, they can get some diversity into that corner because uh, for those of you who, who might not watch our, our Falcon and Winter Soldier reviews, um, the best stuff was involving like Sam and Isaiah Bradley. And uh, we have a feeling that it wasn't the white writers who, did yeah, there, so. there are there are three black writers on staff for Falcon and the Winter Soldier who are never credited as the main writer for any of the episodes. Take a wild guess where they're probably putting some of that work. Yeah, um, I am really happy that a fourth Captain America with Sam Wilson is coming. Um, I wish it would be any other writers. Um, I, I I really like Falcon and Winter Soldier, but a lot of the script was lacking, and I don't yeah. and the plot threads that that show sets up. If their if their involvement is a sign that those plot threads will be continued in Captain America four, I don't want it. Yeah, that's what, that's that what we're all that's what we're kind of all feeling. Yeah, I definitely I definitely like I definitely fe want a black creative voice behind the film. Yeah, like like you know we all know. I feel like it's in the public zeitgeist enough. Like everybody knows Sam Wilson's Captain America as as you should have known by the end of Endgame that was going to come. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it really feels like it needs to have a black voice somewhere in the main steering of it. So I, I hope that happens. Mm -hmm. You suggested um, to me that the perfect person for it might be Jordan Peele. I think I know I won't say perfect, but I think he'd be, be a cool choice. I'd I really like to do that. Cool you put um, that in my head. I haven't stopped thinking about I it. I know. I know a lot of his directing ventures have been horror up to this point, but like, He's got an idea for a gargoyles movie. I have to have a feeling <laughs> that he could he could probably pull off a cool Captain America film. Yeah, yeah. If he wanted to, um, but but that's just an idea. Like, there's a lot there's a lot of people you could get into that seat, uh, and I just hope that it's not. I hope this is not two white writers and a white director. Yeah, uh, yeah. because I I do think that kind of matters. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So we'll we'll find out. Also, just this is working backwards. Interesting note. I, I, I really think it'd be cool if we hit that point because we haven't really been able to have it because of the pandemic where we're going to hit Captain Marvel 2 comes out three weeks later, Secret Invasion. Like you just roll right into it rather than yeah. it being like a gap. Like yeah. that's going to be wild when we have that. Like, that'll be like a, that will be like the Winter Soldier In the... S.H.I.E.L.D. moment at its best oh, absolutely. when that happened. When you watched Winter Soldier and the next week you were watching the fallout on S.H.I.E.L.D. and it was like, wow, this is wild. That was a wild time. No matter <laughs> yeah. how you feel about S.H.I.E.L.D., that was a that's wild time. That's the hypest the show could ever be. And it's like, it's, it's almost too good for that show. How well that week to week actually happened. And I was like, wow, this worked. I remember this guy constantly telling me, he's like, dude, you need to watch Shield for the Fallout for or because of the Fallout from uh Winter Soldier. I'm like, I really like how, I really like the ending of this first season. <laughs> yeah. It it was it was that that might be one like one of my favorite moments in true public release television yeah. scheduling because I was like, I was there when Shield came out and I watched it and I'm like, oh, it's time to go see Winter Soldier. I went yeah. watch Winter Soldier and I come what? back. Because the episode that leads into it came out the week that Winter Soldier comes out. So you're like pumped. You're like, oh, a thing. They, they hinted at a thing. In, and then you watch Inside it. Or something, yeah. and, then, and then you watch the movie and you're like, oh no. And then next week you drop on that episode. You're like, oh no. One of, the, one of the, like, your main characters revealed to be a bad guy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, this is sick as hell. 
Um, I would love it if we can hit that kind of high with rolling right into a show after a movie with the Marvel, the, yeah. the Disney Plus production. We were, we were definitely supposed to with WandaVision going into uh, Doctor Strange and Multiverse yeah. Madness. They were supposed to come out close together. Yeah. Yeah. But pandemic. Ew. Cool. Spider Man Into the Spider Verse 2 announced the directing, the directing trio for this film. Uh, Joaquin DeSantos, who uh, most famously has done Avatar The Last Airbender and Avatar The Legend of Korra, as well as some episodes of Ultron. Uh, Kent Powers, who is the co director of Soul, co writer mm-hmm. and co director. Um, right. And Justin K. Thompson, who hasn't directed anything, but has been involved in many art departments uh, across all animation, um, have been officially announced as the directors for this film, replacing Peter Ramsey, Bob Persichetti, and Rodney Rothman, who directed the first film. Cool. I mean, they're all more more good, talented directors. And then uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are obviously returning to write the sequel. They wrote the first film with... uh, Rodney Rotham, Rothman. Um, this time, they, however, they will be joined by David Callahan, who re recently just saw a movie from him, Mortal Kombat. Mm. Um, he's done, he's written Doom, Wonder Woman 84, Mortal Kombat, and the upcoming Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. He's teaming up. Shang-Chi, oh. damn it. Uh, he <laughs> is teaming up with the with Lord of Miller to write the script. Uh, it, okay. it, it sounds like maybe he, he, he'll be like the cool action punch up guy, maybe. Because Chris and Lord Lord Miller are like the real good like comedy duo. Maybe yeah. he's like there for punch up, like make it yeah. a little more exciting. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, this guy's mostly been a co-writer for most things, so you know, yeah. who knows where you can really put the faults on those movies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Doom was all his, so that's actually his fault. <laughs> eh, fifteen years ago, he's probably a youngster. It's his first movie. Yeah. Hey, it's not his fault if the studio said make Resident Evil, but with Doom, and I mean Resident Evil the movie. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Cool. That movie. Super stoked. Yeah. Um, you talked about Titans. Well, Doom Patrol season three is coming, and they've just announced the Dead Boy Detectives. Uh, Ty Tennant and Sebastian Croft will play the Dead Boy Detectives, which are characters originally found in the Sandman universe. Oh. Uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Oh. Um, Tennant has been cast as Edwin Payne, uh, who has been dead since 1916. Edwin spent 80 years in hell due to a clerical error. It has seen horrors no one could imagine. Great. Love it. That sounds cool. like a Neil Gaiman character. Yeah. That sounds like Doom Patrol. <laughs> um, Sebastian Croft will play Char- Charles Rowland, who is an affable, charming, and dead, who has been, who is affable, charming, and dead since 18, since 1980, 1889. Um, he always does his best to be chipper, but his death by hypothermia and neglect haunts him. Man. That shows the heck is season three going to be. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just glad it's happening. Yeah, it's crazy that they're introducing a Sandman character. Uh, one one hundred percent Doom Patrol is is maybe the most comic booky show yeah. on TV. Um, in a, in the best way. Yeah, my flex uh, mentality is on that show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, y- you guys, I would love nothing more than for you guys to catch up and and do season three when it comes out because like that show is sick. I'll do it. I got nothing better to do. Sick. Um, I I do really want to watch it. I yeah, with the with the Sandman series coming, I assume these characters would be reserved for Sandman, but that's cool. I like this. Yeah. Um. All right, and the Flash movie, guys. I put this I put this one in here because it's very cannot, good. Yeah. Uh, I because I cannot believe it. It is it is true. The Flash film has started filming. Holy! Uh, I think I think it was last week, and we blew past it. But maybe I'm remembering mm-hmm. wrong. But um, importantly, the Flash logo was released, and it's only important because they showed they're giving him the yellow lightning back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Damn it! Which I care about. <laughs> I'm so glad he'll have yellow lightning. I totally forgot. That was another thing I did this week. I finished the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Oh, you yeah. did. I finished that. Cool. We will uh, talk about you. Review coming soon. A uh, uh, discussion coming, yeah. Discussion yeah. is coming, now, yes. Now we're ready. Uh, Michael Keaton has also been confirmed to be coming. Uh, he said he was a little, he was still thinking about it, but now they started filming, I'm sure he's on the set. Ready to go. I am very, very glad because I want to live in a world where I get to see him one more time as Bill Batman. <laughs> I mm-hmm. hope that they bring back uh, the, the guy they used for Crisis just for one scene with him. Oh, uh, Detective just Knox. To, just to connect yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's crazy to me that that flashes flashes filming. I'm 
really. I was, I was seven seriously years. Thinking, seven years we've been waiting. It feels like it. <laughs> if, yeah, it does feel like seven years because I've been. I honestly, guys, I thought that that any mm. mo- news about that movie is like, yeah, they're gonna start filming in a week. I'm like, no, it's not. I will Ooh. not believe it until I see a trailer. I feel it. like since this podcast inception, we've been talking about directors coming and going for like yeah. literally years. Like for yeah. real, we have like it's as long as this podcast. Uh, I oh. go ahead. I was gonna say, didn't we have like a pool going on how long a director was gonna stay on the Flash project until they left? I don't oh. think a serious one, but perhaps we joked about it. Yeah. We did joke about it, yeah. Um, yeah, I I really want this movie to come out at this point because I'm not stoked that the first Flash movie is Flashpoint. But mm-hmm. uh, that being said, I do want something that's kind of gonna clear the air and put us on a path of where we're going as far as like the Snyder stuff and where the films are at in some, some connective tissue. Um, it's been great that it hasn't really mattered on a lot of films up to this point. And I don't really care too hard about, like I said, DC's film universe has reached a point where it's kind of a choose your own adventure of mm-hmm. continuity, <laughs> but I do like that. They're going to give some kind of clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Ray Fisher also said he's, he wants to, he wants to come back, but they got to wants to, but he needs an apology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> Which, uh, let's wait. Sorry, real quick on that Ray Fisher thing. Let's be clear. They made a very clear statement they were moving on without him. So yeah. I don't think that's in the cards at this point, regardless of anything. I don't expect them to kowtow and go backwards at this point and apologize. I wish they would, but I don't expect it. Yeah. yeah. Well, now we're going to talk about <laughs> comics, comic books, the, the things that those things come from. I like them. Uh, I have a giant ass stack that I really need to finish. Oh, my God. Thank God I got a few days off coming up. Aliens. The 35th anniversary of Aliens is coming, and Marvel has decided to celebrate with an oversized issue called Aliens Aftermath. Written by Benjamin Percy with art by Dave Watcher. Uh, this book takes place at the Hadley's Hope Colony on Acheron, or LV-426, decades after the events that transpired in James Cameron's mm-hmm. original 1986 film. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm actually excited. Cool. I, like, I really um, like Aliens. Um, no, yeah, I'm definitely, after the lukewarm response to the number one that I still have not read, uh, I'm much hotter on Benjamin Percy as a writer, so I'll definitely yeah. check this book out for sure. Yeah, that's that's yeah. true. Like, it, it helps that I have more reason to have faith in this. Um, Different artists, too. Yeah, yeah. As someone who did read Alien Number One, I'm I'm a little sour about an Alien comic right now, but yeah. hopefully this this will be a little bit of a palate Especially cleanser. if it's just like a little like one shot anniversary thing, like they can just be a self contained good little story. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Last Annihilation. Uh, oh, sorry, I was just gonna say like I do I do like that Disney. This feels like a dark horse move, and I'm glad that Disney is still doing things like this. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, because I'm I I am glad again, as someone who didn't like Alien number one, that they're not doubling down on like, this is the only Alien comic, and if you don't like it, tough! Yeah. Um, really glad that's not the attitude. Yeah. I agree. Um, we all also agree that Al Ewing is a great writer, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, The Last Annihilation is coming, a crossover between Sword and the Guardians of the Galaxy, his two books. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 16 will see the entire galaxy under attack, the likes of which haven't been seen since Annihilus first waged war, someone out there has awakened with a new vision for the universe, and they have the army to make it a reality. When five different planets fall under siege, will it be too much even for the new Guardians of the Galaxy to handle? Yes, yeah. because they're going to need Sword. Yeah. And, and Sword has Doctor Doom. <laughs> and now we have Doctor Doom and like Magneto. Oh my god, Magneto and Doctor Doom are going to be in an event together. Oh my god! So sick. Um, Doctor Doom is Doctor Doom is going to be at the the Hellfire Gala. Hell yeah! Oh, he's going to look so good. Seriously, baby, baby, Doctor Doom's involved in Sword, baby. I mean, I had a feeling he was going to be involved in Sword. Like, he was in Sword. Doctor Doom's Guardians. Oh, gotcha. Yes. But but Doctor Doom, read... what we're talking about, Doctor Doom is in the Sword issue for this crossover because he yeah. was at the uh, Hellfire Gala. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I can't wait. okay. Because the way you were saying it, I thought Doctor Doom was in was like part of the team of Sword. I'm like, no. hold up. He's on the Guardians of the Galaxy. But he is on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Hold up, what? Yeah. Hey, man, comics are cool. Al Young's great. Um, Annihilation is truly, like, one of the best events Marvel's ever done. Like, it is so big in scope and so fun. And, like, it really 
change like the fate of that 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 universe in a shifting they, way. They reprint it every like seven years, and it always sells out. Right? Because it's the dopest yeah. thing, and it's it's like it's like when Guardians of the Galaxy was the best with Abin and Lanny, and it's like all that cosmic stuff was like just the the bee's knees. Like again, like the best era Marvel. Could the bee's knees. And like Al Ewing's just like if you're gonna do some of that, there was an Annihilation mini event, like Annihilation Scourge, like a, a year or two ago. That they true. they tried to do that again. And it didn't it didn't work as well. So I think they're gonna try one more time, but this time without you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I'm stoked. I really like both these books. Um, I really like Al Ewing. So Annihilus is really cool. I wonder if this new vision for the universe knows the story of Theseus's ship. Mm. I hate you. <laughs> Watch. A million visions. <laughs> You're right. Of course, the answer is of course. Amelia Clark is gonna get into the comic book world now. Good for her. With Mom, Mother of Madness. Is she doing free... it through Kickstarter? No. Good. Uh, just publishing through Image. Yeah. Great. Um, this is a three-issue miniseries which follows Maya, uh, an under-the-weather scientist during the day, a superhero by night, and a single mother around the clock. The story features Maya using her powers to take down a cabal of human traffickers. Uh, so the part that a lot of the uh, these news sites is not reporting on is that uh, she gets her powers during her menstrual cycle, uh, and that's like oh. a big plot point of the movie and how like being a mother is inse- like uh, sorry yeah the comic is like essential to like her character in the comic. So like I think that's really cool. It's like really like like it's a very like uh, four ladies four ladies like like again to always talk about perspective and different perspectives. Um, and like that's a book like I'll check this number one out. It's I cool. Think, I think more than anything, anything that normalizes us being able to consume pop culture where we have to acknowledge the menstrual cycle yeah. is because it's literally they deal with it every month like it's not it's not like it's not this Much like, like uh, superstitious man, thing man eaters like man eaters like yeah, yeah. yeah um uh, anything that makes you have to be more comfortable with the fact that women have anatomy yeah <laughs> um this will also i mean Clark is developing it uh and co-writing with marguerite bennett yeah um with art by layla lays Please. Good for her. Marguerite bennett is, is, a, is a is a great writer that's cool i like amelia clark a lot as a person so that's cool you guys remember Hill House? DC's imprint Il- Hill House? Yes. Yeah, Joe Hill, a Stephen King's mm-hmm. son. Forget about it, because now we got DC Horror. Oh, sorry, Joe. Oh. A new imprint coming from DC, which is going to kick off with DC Horror Presents The Conjuring, The Love. The prequel to the new Conjuring movie. Is Batman in it? No. <laughs> what kind of Fortnite crossover is this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, as w- the new Conjuring movie is coming, this will be written by the uh, writer for the second and third Conjuring film, uh, David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick, um, with uh, and Rex Ogle is co-writing uh, with art by Gary Brown. Okay. Man, Conjuring is getting at the comic book prequel. Weird. Yeah. Right. Man, Warner Brothers getting into it. That feels like that can go either way. I I, I respect it. At least uh, I respect them trying. Yeah. I think that's cool doing comics. All right. I mean, they, yeah. they are, you know, t- technically through some level, they are the ones doing it with like the MonsterVerse and stuff. So mm-hmm. yep. and that can be hit or miss. Like movie prequel comics in general tend to be like, they can either land real good or they can miss real hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Um, yeah. Mm. Ultimately, I like the I like the Conjuring films. Conjuring 2 is my favorite of the entire franchise. 100%. So, uh, this guy writing it does give me uh, at least some hope. Annabelle Creation's real close, though. Yeah, Annabelle uh, Creation's damn, good. Damn good. I'm real glad I like an Annabelle movie so <laughs> much. That's, that's real impressive. Uh, Conjuring uh, 3, when I found out it was written by him, I was like, oh, I'm actually kind of okay with that. And then I remembered it's the, the director for The Curse of, the, of La Llorona. And I'm like, oh, maybe. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. Maybe he got better. Sure. Yeah, um, I didn't. The, La Llorona is the only one within the Conjuring universe that I didn't see. And you're the you're for the better, it's for the better. That's what I heard. I it, it bums me out because I really like that as a the basis of that creepy concept. Tale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. it's a it's a bummer that that movie didn't click. Uh, Blue and gold. You know, we were just talking about how great Dan Jurgens is. Hasn't changed a day since the 1990s. We've been saying that. Who says that? Well, we talked about it when we talked about DC Generations, right? Oh, maybe. Uh, also, yeah. hey, change 90s, Brandon, to 80s. <laughs> well, we didn't say any of that. We say he sucks. Uh, Dan Jurgens is returning with Ryan Sook to uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, Ted Kord. Um, they're going to be doing uh, a book about the about about the two of them for the first time. Uh, uh, 
Oh, man. No, th- 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 all that we just said, no disrespect to Dan Jurgens. That dude has had a long le- legacy of writing great stuff. Just his modern stuff, it's just, it feels like his older stuff. And, you know, older fans like that stuff. It's not for me. Uh, he's definitely a more classically older writer. Um, this feels super safe and kind of boring. <laughs> like, it's about Booster Gold getting into social media, though. Yeah. And what's better than like a 60 year old man writing that? Uh, that's fantastic. Right. Uh, that's the thing with, with like, they always get like the oldest writers to write like young, like hip characters, especially like doing social media stuff. And um, hey, it could be good. Ryan Sook's an awesome artist, like like a young, really up and coming great artist. Um, I just Dan Jurgens, like I really was hoping like I would like a fresh name, a cool a cool spin on it. Yeah, it this, feels like uh, it could run the gamut of that uh, snowflake idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan that Jurgens, hasn't seen, that hasn't seen the light of day yet. Has it, it? It, I think it got canceled. Oh, New Warriors. Yeah. No, I, that. I, that got I canceled. Think, I think I got canceled. Oh, good, good, because yeah. that was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he, they should definitely pretend they never, ever thought of that. I think if they did. <laughs> I think they are doing that. Yeah. Um, Dan Jurgens has uh, had a long run with Booster Gold and uh, just like in a national. Yeah. Um, so, like, I guess it makes sense from DC's perspective to do this. But, like, DC also hasn't known what to do with Booster Gold since the New 52. Yeah. And I, I, I've i read Justice League International. That book's great, but it's also, like, 30 years old. Like. Yeah. No, no disrespect, but I'm just like, man, I, they just don't know what to do with those characters, like you said. Just man, the new. last time, so okay, one, the person who knows what to do with those characters is Tom Taylor, um, because they mm. are great in DC East uh, yeah, and right. um, in Justice, which I just read, um, or Justice League Action, which or just was like, used excellently in Justice mm. League Action repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last time uh, DC did anything interesting with Booster Gold was in Convergence, oddly enough. Uh, that that event that we all try to forget. Uh, he's in Tom King's Batman, but people don't like that. I think he's fine. Oh, I haven't read that. I can't say. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I I like him. He's yeah. he's. Like, I liked him. Yeah. yeah, I liked him. In it's Tom it's King. definitely a darker. It's a, I was thinking. Yeah. Like, it's I a darker read him recently. It's a darker take on the character, but I really like it. Yeah. Um. He in in convergence he he becomes Wave Rider, which is his future self that he's destined to be. And I thought it was really cool. And I never did anything with that. And I was like, it, because it tied it into uh, Future State and the the Justin International that launched the New 52, mm-hmm. where Booster Gold meets his, his, his last timeline reboot self and is confused what's going on. And that kind of like, it was a really cool concept. They just never did anything with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, every character gets like a big fresh reboot every couple, like every like decade or so. Like, well, it'll happen eventually. This Within is just a decade, we'll get we'll get our yeah. immortal booster. Gold. Yeah. This blue and gold book will be like the this is the safe book for now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we all like the DC anime animated universe. We do. Uh, have I seen any of the movies? Putting words in my mouth. The the war. You like Superman the animated series? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justice League Infinity is coming. Uh, there's Batman. The adventure continues right now. We know about 80, Batman 89 and Superman 78. This is the newest line of DC Animated Universe continuity. Uh, Justice League Infinity will take place after the finale of Justice League Unlimited. We'll pare down the Justice League back to its original seven. Uh, and then go explore the multiverse. I... I'm not traditionally into, and it's not because they're bad books. I just like the the, the animated Batman comic book. I'm I'm just I'm not going to read it. You know, the Batman sixty six. Like I'm not generally into those. I am very much into this one because the concept is is a little bit different and it's returning to an era that I haven't re- revisited in myself in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'll check out the first issue at least. <clears throat> um, I I I man, that's a great show. Yeah, I, I'm really stoked for this. The first the fourteen. Uh, digital chapters will start on May 14th and then the print issues, which will collect the, uh, the digital chapters uh, will start on July 6th. Yeah. Okay. I'll check the first issue out for this one. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm excited. I'll check the first issue out. Guess what was officially announced? Superman and the authority. Oh, Grant Morrison, Grant Morrison, of course we knew was coming out. This was coming. Uh, Grant Morrison and Mike, uh, Mikkel Janin. Oh, we no, are. Okay, sorry. <laughs> You're talking to me. We're having cat problems. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 the uh, the the comic has officially been announced as a, as a four issue mini series, uh, which will spin off of uh, Future's End. Grant Morrison will be taking the reins of Superman. Has and he's got to make a new authority, which has Manchester Black, uh, Steel, Apollo, uh, Midnighter. Um, yeah. So it's a weird combination of characters, but it's cool. Yeah, uh, I like Grant Morrison's writing Superman. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Good Superman. They write. They write a good Superman. God darn shit, kid. It's okay. It's a learning. Oh, experience. God. I only do it so that it'll start coming to you quicker. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's going to happen. Poke myself in the eye. Did, definitely meant to do that. Um, Superman is getting a new line. New a, a new launch. Superman, son of Kal-El. We'll see John Kent take over as Superman of Earth with Tom Taylor writing with art by John Timms. Did I misread or this is going to be the Superman title? This is the Superman title. They're canceling yeah, that, Superman. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, Tom Taylor, obviously great writer. Uh, the Deceased Dead Planet, the sequel to the first Deceased where John where John has grown up and he is Superman. It's some of the best Superman I've read in like the last couple years. Truly like he gets that character, even though it's the son, he gets the Superman character so well. And like, I, this is truly exciting. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's still like the young John Kent that was like went further in time and came back and the stuff I haven't read from Bendis, but like Tom Taylor's writing the Superman number one ongoing book. This is, this is everything we've wanted. And it's, and it's the legacy character being Superman. This is everything I've wanted from Superman comic. Truly. <laughs> it is like what I wanted DC to do. Uh, John, uh, John Kent, I've, I, I, one of my biggest problems with aging him up is that Brett, Brian Michael Bendis stripped him of all personality. Mm -hmm. And that made the character very boring. Tom Taylor wrote, the greatest John Kent since Patrick Gleason uh, in DC Dead Planet, uh, DC in general. Um, yeah. So I'm super stoked to see his voice return to that character. Um, and the fact that Phil Kennedy Johnson, great, you get Ashkin's comics, but you are also not writing Superman. The main Superman title is written by Tom Taylor, who we have de needed to that's, get something like this. That is the big win for me, is that this is the Superman ongoing. Yes. Um, I'm very pleased. I'm stoked to be able to put Superman back on my pull list. Yeah. I was going to say the exact same thing. The second I saw that Tom Taylor's name was going to be on this project, I'm like, this is going in my pool. I'm going to the store this week, uh, right after I get paid, and I'm like, yo, Tom Taylor's Superman. Put that on my pull list. I want that number one. I want that to stay there. I am just ecstatic that he is writing the Superman book. What's it called? It's a. It's called Superman Son of El. Son of Kal El. Son of Kal El. Cool. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, I'm jazzed. Yeah. The fact that Tom Taylor. I mean, look, Tom Taylor got Nightwing. That's really cool. That's a great book. But this is Tom Taylor getting to write Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is huge. This is a guy who not, we love not, writing his. Not a spinoff. Not a one-off. Not of an Elseworlds. Not an Elseworlds. He's Super. written nothing but Elseworlds. Yeah, and they're all great. And finally, oh, it's a huge win for him. And I did read Nightwing number one, and it's awesome. It's yeah. excellent. Uh, the arts, it's astounding. I can't believe it's the same guy who did Injustice because, like, no offense to like like five years ago, but that dude's art is improved exponentially, yeah. like so much. Uh, uh, Tom Taylor is like one of my favorite writers. Today. He's great. Yeah, uh, DC Dead Planet hardcover comes out this coming week. I'm so excited. So good. Those hardcovers look so good together. Mm -hmm. Guys, I just had a bad thought. Don't. No, no, no. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. I'm actually don't curious. Jinx the Taylor. No, I, I don't want to jinx the Taylor. I, I, wow, that's a phrase. But yeah, it sounds I like remember. you're talking about your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I hope they hemmed them right. No, <laughs> I just, I just remember how as, as excited we were when we got the news that Bendis was writing Superman. This isn't a guy who's been writing comics since the 40s. No, I'm not kidding. He's not that old. <laughs> but like <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis, his best stuff is behind him. Tom Taylor's best stuff is in front of him. Okay. Like right. hands down. This is this is a guy in his prime it's writing the these books. Because I'm trying to look back at every single book of Tom Taylor's that I have read, and I have not been disciplined in any of those. So here's the thing, yeah. I'm like I don't I don't Bendis. think the comparison's good because wow. Bendis is literally like the number one comic book writer like in, in, in like history. He wrote every single comic book at Marvel. He wrote multiple events. Tom yeah. Taylor has written nothing but side stories and Elseworld books, and he's lucky he's lucky he even got Nightwing. Like he the dude has deserved a win like this. No offense to philip kennedy johnson that dude's brand new to comics and he wrote he's re writing both superman and action that's just like that doesn't make sense so it's nice that tom taylor is actually given the role that like he's he has earned this like no writer has earned the superman book more than him yeah okay very excited yeah right not to All say right. i'm not because i am no yeah that book is in my poll yeah yeah um and just so so great all right honestly best comic news of the week yeah, yeah for sure i agree 100 percent agree Disney and the Jim Henson Company are developing a biopic about Jim Henson called Muppet Man. Good. 
Uh, they are going to produce this with Lisa Henson, his daughter. Um, and the script is being rewritten by Kevin McNick, who's um, mostly a, a playwright, not really a fil- not really a film guy. So, cool. Uh, I'm really happy that they're going to ha- do this. Um, just yeah. more good Jim Henson discussion content. That man deserves uh, all all the documentary stuff you want to do about him. He deserves it. That he revolutionized like puppeteering for film and television. Yeah. Uh, he's he's up there with Walt, and I don't think he always gets put on that heavy pedestal yeah. that he should be next to him. Yeah, he's the I puppet agree. master, truly, yeah. And then, Hilary Duff has been cast in the new spinoff of How I Met Your Mother, called How I Met Your Father. Mm. Uh, which is going straight to series from Hulu. Ooh, straight. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm glad she has, has work. When I first heard this news, I'm like, we, got, we lost Lizzie McGuire for this. <laughs> uh, so she is one of the she is the star but she is also one of the creative voices behind it which so, okay. interesting. which to me she's she's going to be working closely on crafting the show um this okay. is two two of the producers from how i met your mother though not the creators um bay and thomas coming back uh to me if i were to take a wild guess this feels like they saw an opportunity to just when, do lizzie mcguire <laughs> well when lizzie mcguire was taken away yeah because hillary said i want to do very particular things with the character to be realistic to convey things about actually being an adult that disney was like no we're not doing that with lizzie mcguire and she was like okay cool then <laughs> yeah. we're not doing lizzie mcguire i think that this is like we're willing to do those things on her how character's her- name is lizzie mcguire <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they're willing to tell a story that is more what she was wanting to do with Lizzie. Mm-hmm. And because I want Hillary Duff to succeed, I think this is a win. Yeah. Um, no, as, as, you said, uh, as you said, uh, Hillary Duff um, is uh, producing this with Carter Bays and Greg Thomas, who are the creators of Hi, My Mother. They're producing uh, Isaac Aptacker and Elizabeth Berger, who are the showrunners for This Is Us, are mm-hmm. shepherding this. Okay. Ooh, it's going to be super sad. Yeah. No, Ryan, you want to know what her, her character's name is going to be? What? It's Sophie. Well, oh, damn it. I was going right. to Mac- I was gonna say Liz McIntyre. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think that this has potential. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really happy that she's getting something like this after Lizzie McGuire was really sadly taken away from her because she wanted to do something real and sincere with it. I was yeah. actually excited um, for that Lizzie McGuire. I was 100% excited about it because of the way she was talking about it, not because of the way anyone else was talking about it. Uh Uh, So the fact that this feels like a consolation for that, um, this is kind of like, you know, uh, like, I guess it's kind of a bad comparison, but like when we didn't get Silent Hill, we got Death Stranding with, with, I'm not lying. That's where my brain went. With with Norman Reedus (laughs) in it and still working with Kojima and Del Toro. And I'm like, this feels like that. This feels like fine. We'll take similar concepts and be creative in a different way. And, and, I'm all for it. Like uh, this is probably the best circumstance I could want something like how I met your mother again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm here for it. I agree. Great. All right. And it's on Hulu. So I feel like the quality of it is maybe going to be an uptick above what we were getting on CBS. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. True. And also um, more creative freedom too, since it's going straight to streaming. Yes. Well, Indiana Jones five cast another actor. Another one? Thomas Kretschmann mm-hmm. has joined the cast. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's just right off the bat. Baron Von Strucker from Age of Ultron. Yes. Uh, okay. That dude's, that dude's great actor. You know who else is in this movie? Mads Mikkelsen. Those are two dudes who are kind of villainous look, looking together. <laughs> you, can say, you can just say they seem like they're playing Nazis. They seem like they're playing Nazis. <laughs> Um, he was also in King Kong, which I, which is where I know him from, and he's great. That's, yeah, that's he's in he King Kong. He's the yeah. the ship captain. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I need to rewatch the the Peter Jackson King Kong. It's been years. All I remember is, is Adrian Brody's in it. Jack Black is the director, and that's about it. I I always wow, remember I forgot Andy Circus the the weirdest shot in the whole movie when when Adrian Brody's typing on his typewriter. Sc- Cool. And I, I will never forget. I'm like, this is odd, Peter Jackson. <laughs> it's like um, driving home is like they're going to Skull Island. It's, it's a like, it's a weird yeah, shot. Yeah. It's it's like him sealing his fate. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh I really like the movie. 
-hmm. That's like him signing the deal with the devil. But I know mm -hmm. what you mean. It yeah. still visually looks like a lot. Yeah. And we, I mentioned it up top, but guys, they're remaking Real Steel. Do you see? No, can they're not. They're me, making... Can you tell me real quick the, the plot synopsis for this for this movie? Well, I will tell you the plot synopsis. The story will follow a father, played by Diesel, who forms a bond with a fighting robot alongside his son. No! Uh -huh. So, um, I'm lying. This is actually a new movie called Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Vin, no! You think that Vin Diesel has been attached to star on. Oh, Can I tell you guys a really quick story? Please, about I guess so. Okay. Back when I was in the, at Mount San Antonio College, I was part of a morning radio show. And when the trailers for, and like the week Real Steel came out in theaters, I actually had a Rock'em Sock'em Robots toy that was gifted to me for my birthday. And on the air... We, me and my co-host and my producer had like a little real steel slash rock of soccer. Cause the joke was real steel is rock of soccer robots. The movie Yes, real yeah. steel uh, for those of you don't know, for real steel for those of you who don't know um, is actually not based off rock of soccer robots. That was just kind of the joke. It's very similar. Um, it's based on a short story of the same name. Um, it's officially almost 10 years old now. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. Wow. Um, but this is the, actually the adaptation of that game that Ben was talking about. That sounds exactly like real steel. <laughs> <sighs> I, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this concept and you've already had a movie that's done this concept, be or be original with it. Make it like a mech kaiju thing where like they're inside the robots. Like make it something completely different. But they're yeah. just doing they're literally doing real steel, but with Vinny D. And I'm yeah. just like, you're not Hugh Jackman. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's like that kaiju movie, that anime kaiju movie where the kaiju are all pro wrestlers. That's oh. I mean, it's goofy. Rumble. That's what it's called. I forgot what the title. But at least it's something original. It's something mm -hmm. fun. This is uh, literally just... <laughs> I made fun of Real Steel for being Rock'em Soccer Rollins, and now Rock'em Soccer... I can't believe I'm going to be making fun of Rock'em Soccer Rollins for being Real Steel. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, so so look forward to when this movie's coming out. We'll do a... Like our video game comparison, we will talk about all the movies adapted from board games. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and where they rank. Clue is the best. We have a trailer for one today, so that'll be fun. It's weird. It's uh, odd. We do? We'll yes. you're, you're, you'll, you'll find tell, out. We'll tell you. You'll find out. Oh, we do. Okay. And can't we'll wait. tell you which one it is. You'll find out. Don't try. Don't. We'll oh, no. I'm gonna. Just, you can't stop me. I'm trying. We'll, we'll get when we get there. Well, um, we're going to. We're gonna. We're gonna completely ignore that. And we're. Gonna... I. I oh, cannot. Okay. I can't. I don't I I know, know if. Is. So this isn't the only one. This same group. They're trying to make board game films. Uh, they're doing that one. Uh, the Uno, one that they're working on. Oh, with. Uh -huh. Method Man or something? It was. Uh, it's a rapper. Uh, uh, I forget which one. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, it, I, I. This all sounds so like a mess. Uh, just, Wasn't there I don't, a trailer? I don't, for I don't know, man. Hold on. Okay, I remember a long time ago that there was a bunch of movies based off board games that were air quotes in the works. I think Seth, uh, Seth Goldberg was working. Or no, Daniel not, Kaluuya was doing a Barney movie. Ridley Scott was attached to Monopoly for years. Yeah. And that was a movie that was actually going to happen. And it was going to be like a weird, like business tycoon, like roller coaster movie. That was one of them. The other one was not Seth Goldberg. Seth Rogen was a trap was attached to a trivial pursuit movie. Mm. I believe it. Uh, Battleship just did so well, guys. Hey man, ba Battleship could be a worse movie. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Until we um, can land. Yeah, I guess just so. Saying. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. guess you're right that Battleship could be a worse movie. It's, anyway, <laughs> yeah. like it's it's weird on its own for these like very simplistic things like Rock'em Sock Sock'em Robots to be turned into a film very specifically Rock'em Sock'em Robots. But like when Real Steel does already exist, it, it's kind of like why are you going why are you going to that well? It's I just lazy. It, yeah, it feels it feels it's unimaginative. Yeah, man. Yeah, weird. Yeah. All right. Well, we're what? gonna talk. Well, this will this could be a good topic for another show. What would what board games would make for a decent film slash TV franchise? None. Don't do it. Oh, okay, that's a quick. That well, if quick. you really if you really want to like break Dick. down colonialization, do Sellers of Catan. Oh, oh yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> Clue is the best board game movie. Clue is that's true. Agreed. Also just a great movie. <laughs> All right. We know a bit more about the Continental. We haven't heard about the show for a long time. This is the spinoff of John Wick. We actually um, have news about this. We actually have a bit of news about it. Um, the producers talked a bit about that it will be set in the seventies in New oh. York, 
and will follow a young Winston, mm -hmm. who's played by mm -hmm. Ian McShane, as he finds, as they start to found, uh, found this society. That is awesome. Who's a good actor to play a young Ian McShane? I, I don't know. I oh. don't know. I can't. I'm, he's one of those really unique dudes. Yeah. That's hard to picture younger. Yeah. He's, he's very distinguished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, type he, of young Ian McShane. Uh, the uh, it, will, it will also be a that's like three... who would play that's like who would play young Christopher Walken. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It will be three episodes and Dylan O'Brien. Oh, okay, actually, okay. all right. Hold okay. on, it's gonna be hard to see, but look, Dylan yeah. O'Brien mm -hmm. from Mother Monsters. Okay. Um, okay. Real, uh, uh, real quickly, the the show will be three ninety minute episodes. Oh, that's oh. like Sherlock format. Oh, yeah. BBC, um, I love it. Interesting. Yeah. Three movies. That's, I'm just excited that it's still happening. Cause like we, we don't really hear from it. So like right on. Yeah. And then, uh, finally, before we go into trailers, Sony pictures made waves yet again with an exclusive streaming deal. This time, this was weird with Disney plus, What? <laughs> this is so bizarre. Did they just announced something on Netflix. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the Disney plus deal is for this is weird. Okay, so they made a deal to stream upcoming films to Disney Plus after they have already aired on Netflix. So they get they get seconds seconds. Yes. Yeah. So it goes to Netflix first, which was the deal we talked we heard about three weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago, and then after the Netflix run is done, they'll go to Disney Plus, and that'll be that'll be the model from now on. Wait. So so, so but it's it's not the Netflix run, right? It's just quarter. It's just one quarter. That's what yeah, I saw. Three months. That's that's how long the that's how long the shows will be. The movies will be on Netflix. Will be about three months, and then they go to Disney Plus. I thought they were staying on Netflix. Staying on Netflix. Oh, what? At I, least for at least for a certain contract time. Uh, this is why I tried. It's like, I tried to figure this out, and I couldn't. It's like parents fighting but custody what, of but kids. But what I thought it was is that Netflix has, Netflix's contracts have them for some amount of time. I don't know what the end of that contract is, um, and then. At the end of one quarter, Disney Plus will also have them. Um, yeah, yeah. The the Netflix run is three months, so that is the quarter. Okay, then, so not longer than that. No, it's not longer than that. After that, they'll leave Netflix, go to Disney Plus, and remain there. They won't go to anywhere else. Why? Why did Netflix even? That's weird. Yeah. Rather have it for a little bit than none at all. I guess. I mean, this you is, get you get like Morbius early. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful for this overall. Because it means Sony's not trying to make a streaming service. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I am glad that they're not trying to be the last, because they are the last of the major studios that do, do, doesn't have one. Sony Plus. And, uh, and I'm glad that they kind of read the room and went, I don't think people want another one. Yeah. Let's just hedge our bets and go where we should be. And it makes sense. This is very good because it means Disney's and Sony's relationship is getting better, mm -hmm. uh, which means we, we can oh, hope no. for a lot oh, of good dude, synergy related out. to Spider Man. What Ben? Oh, okay. Okay. Ben's cutting both out. Of you, both of you froze for a second. I got really scared. I was like, "Wait, do you both of you freeze?" Okay. It, right? That was that that happened on your end then. Damn it. Um, uh, I I think that this is good because this means Disney and Sony's working relationship is getting better, mm -hmm. which means hopefully good synergy of around the Marvel properties, the Spider Man mm -hmm. stuff, all that going forward. Yeah, I mean, we already know Vol Vultures in Venom too somehow, yeah. or Morbius, excuse me, Morbius. Mm -hmm. So uh, right, whatever that Funny means. Funny enough, that's not the only Sony or good Sony news we got this week. Um, a while ago, well, this isn't uh, done yet. If you want to wait, oh, okay, I'll be quiet. Sorry, <laughs> if you're gonna go to another thing, I want to finish this. Okay. Um, the 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 Netflix deal uh, does not have rights to. We talked about it. They don't have the the access to the back catalog. It's only the new stuff. That's because Disney Plus and Hulu will have access to the back catalog mm -hmm. of Sony's entire back catalog. Um, so soon, Hulu will be able to play. Jumanji and Hotel Transylvania come June. Nice. nice. Cool. Yeah, that's crazy. Spider I thought, that's the thing, like Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Man, uh, Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, they're going to be on Disney+. Plus. Of course. I will watch Spectacular Spider-Man. Almost, Spider almost all of the MCU will finally be on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> yeah. one, the Incredible Hulk. Just one. Universal, yeah. just give it up already. No. <laughs> doing? no. It's the only <laughs> one we have. have. There's some guy in office just going, now. <laughs> Every year, just no, no. He's 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 holding the contract for the Incredible Hulk. He's like never gonna give it up. I'm yeah. Rick Astley in this. Uh, I told this Edward Norton no. <laughs> um, yeah. are, are we done? Can I talk about my thing real quick? Sure. Okay. 
Um, the other Sony news I was going to uh, bring up was that this week, Sony announced that they're stepping back from the decision to close the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita online stores. Oh, yeah. However, sure. the PlayStation Portable store will close permanently. But um, since that is the oldest system of the three, that kind of makes sense. But yeah. for owners of PS3s and PS Vitas who still use them to this day, you don't have to worry. They're still going to be up and running for, for, for the foreseeable future which I'm pretty sure a lot of my uh, uh, retro game fan uh, friends are just yay. Because at first when we heard the news that they were shutting down, they are like, we got to buy a crap ton of games before they're gone. Now it's like, cool, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, or at least for now. Yeah. There's not a lot in terms of digital only exclusive that I think was on the PS3 that you can't get on the PS4. Digital exclusive. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's a there is some, but I don't think it's a ton. It's like, a lot. It's a lot of like get, smaller indie games that just like that are like niche. Yeah, friends, you can yeah. still get a whole lot of physical discs for things you want on the PS3. Like I still have my PS3, and I have. I want to say most of the most of the the quote not outrage, but like the concerns were from the handheld players. Sure. I mean, I mean, because most of the, I want to say the PlayStation Vita. There's a lot of good um, PS1 games or other games that never made it to PS3, but they were exclusive to the Vita. And the physical copy is super expensive, but the digital one is still really cheap. So yeah, the, like, PS, the PSP became like a like like a lot of people's like mobile PS One player. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was super good for like classic games and stuff. Sure. Yeah, so that's why they're like, oh shit, now we gotta go um, like get a bunch of these games before they're gone in summer. Now they don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Which really is just the sign of Sony. Just make your games available on your newer systems. Like, what are you doing? Come on. Yeah. Stop it. I was just scrolling today because I was looking at some stuff on my PS5 and I'm like, it is stupid that if I have PS Plus, I can play PS3's Mortal Kombat. But if I don't have it, I can't. I can't. I yeah. can't put the disc in. I can't buy it digitally. I can only use it if I have PS Plus. And I'm like, I can play it on this system, but they won't let me. And that's dumb. <laughs> Again, it's just like I look at that and then I look at like my Xbox and I'm like, I... I type in a name of a game that came out on the original Xbox 15 years can't, ago, and I could just buy it. Can't play Mortal Kombat 9 on the Xbox. It's not backwards compatible. That's so silly. Isn't it? Certain, it's one of the games that... It, it's one of the like seven games. People, people are complaining about it, have been complaining about it for years. That's so silly. I know. The one. <laughs> All right. Trailers? Trailers. Ooh, talk. Trailers. So listen, we're not going to tell you which one the video game is until it happens. The board game. That's the fine. video game board game. Yeah. It's both. I have, a, I, have a, I have a feeling. Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Season 3 title trailer. You guys didn't need to watch this. This is one. it. It's this, this one. one. <laughs> I watched the show. Um, we watched I it. Just want, I just wanted to bring it up briefly because I think this looks really good. I really like the show. Um, I like that they're Gilligan's Islanding it, trying to get off the island. And then, I, but then they don't. <laughs> As a person who hasn't been watching the show, there is still nothing in this trailer that sells me. Yeah. What was the name? That's, of why, the I did, that's why you didn't need to watch. I did. I just wanted to bring it up. But you didn't need to watch it. Yeah, but I I did, and I'm telling you that like, if you aren't watching the show already, there's nothing here that's going to grab you. What was the name of the raptor from uh, Fallen Kingdom? The Indo Raptor. Indo -Raptor. Blue. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. Indo Raptor. Uh, Do you yeah. think that's what it is, Brandon? No. It's, it's, it's got a it's got a thing. Oh, that's... It's gonna oh so it's gonna be the in between from the Indominus Rex to the Indo Raptor. Yeah. Oh. Cool. How are these kids not saved by the military when when Ellie was able to send the military in Jurassic Park 3? They were left at an amusement park. Aren't their parents looking for them? Hasn't these... somebody called? <laughs> uh, huh, huh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They've no. tried to get a message out, but it, it still feels like nobody knows they're still on the island. Dang. I, I Three seasons feel in, like parents wow. are looking for them, and I feel like, considering the crisis, someone will go, maybe we need to send a military crew just to see, because uh, that's like a high-profile place, more high-profile than Jurassic Park 3. They got tanks. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Uh, the, se the, se this, the season trailer really reminded me of Gilligan's Island, because they do try to get off the island, and then they get stuck back, and they build, like, treehouse. I, 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 like I think the Gilligan's Island analogy is kind of fun. If I was those kids, I would take that ocean wave personally. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, are you kidding? Like, why right now? What the fork? <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. I think it looks good. Adventure Time Distant Lands Together Again. This is a video game. <laughs> <laughs> this was a surprise uh, because we thought Wizards would be the third, the third special after Obsidian. And this, uh, this was weird. Yeah. Uh, 
I definitely was surprised that we're not. This makes me think that this isn't actually going to be the end of Distant Lands. Uh, uh, this these four they've announced because I don't know why you wouldn't end on the note of Finn and Jake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this makes me think that uh, Distant Lands is going to continue. By the way, I forgot to bring it up earlier in the news. Infinity Train was canceled, and it super duper sucks, guys. Oh, right. It super that. duper 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 sucks. It just had its season four, and it's over. It's canceled. Um, they were in the midst of building comics and. Uh, video games and um they were going their whole plan was what they were going to do with uh comics is they were going to have people from around the world writing new stories from the cultures of different characters getting involved in the infinity train because the infinity train is very antho- anthological uh-huh. um without repeating characters and so they they were gathering they were in the works of gathering all these different writers from around the globe to write new iterations of infinity train um future things in the show were going to end up being in different languages and subtitled and that kind of stuff. They, nice. they had a very ambitious plan that that was approved and then kiboshed. Mm. Uh, this really sucks. Um, just wanted to put that out there. Big bummer. But yeah. anyway, Adventure Time Distant Lands, this does make me think that there's going to be more mm-hmm. because I, I'd be shocked if all of Adventure Time kind of the last button note was Peppermint Butler's special. <laughs> That'd be a little bizarre. Um, I am also surprised that this is not an older Finn. Yeah, I think me too. might be in the same place as me where after we saw Finn in the previous iteration, without spoiling too much for anybody, he's older than he is in the main show. This seems about the same age as the main show. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought that was set up for telling us this is the Finn you're going to see it, in, it, the, in the distant land special. It was interesting to see this happen. And like, it's clearly like after the show, but, way but definitely earlier than we saw than we saw him in that whatever the the title also, was. the title also made me think so uh because it's called together again i yeah. assumed it was going to be that older version of finn because we were going to see him and jake like reconnecting after some time doing their own shit yeah. or not even like that older but like an in-between yes yes uh, i think you and i were both at least picturing something that was on the path to that version of finn yeah. or something um and this could be a big fake out that everything we saw in this teaser could be just the first 10 minutes of the, the special or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we don't actually know what will, that's, true. that's possible. Um, so who knows? It's really interesting. I, I'm, I was a little surprised that this was the teaser we saw. Yeah. I'm really stoked. I really like the last two specials. Everything um, adventure time is great. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Sparks is right that, that this was initially supposed to be after wizards, which is Peppermint Butler's, uh, uh, uh special. I was one for some reason, I keep wanting to say short, um, but they're longer than the episodes. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the fact that they've kind of re- restructured it does tell me that like, we're, we're getting, we've got a, like a, a, maybe a new story unfolding. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think there will be a second run of series specials yeah. at some point. Um, another chunk of four, probably down the road. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't get the impression at this point that they're actually truly done telling any adventure time stories, um, which was kind of what we were initially led to believe distant lands would be. It'd be like a last hurrah. And it was ending with Finn and Jake at together again. Maybe like this, this no longer feels like that's the case. One side they got in the production are like, Oh no, we like this way too much to stop. Uh, definitely. Again, what we're talking about with like this older Finn, it definitely sets up like some, some other stuff has happened in the world. That would be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, man, Bimo's good. Anyway, uh, love death and robots uh, did not, yes uh, have not finished the first season but really liked what I was seeing there I'm just all about like this anthology of unique different original animations yeah I'm happy to just see more of it yeah Me too. All, all looks gorgeous there's one that looks, looks like stop motion that's yes, like oh the, boy the one where they're going down the, the like, Christmas time mm-hmm. yeah uh, that 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 like looks like digital Coraline in yeah. some way yeah yeah oh, good werewolves within this, this is it. This is one. No, uh, this is werewolf, guys. This you is a cookie game. pen. This is this is the card game. This is mafia branded. This is cutthroat. Oh, this is the card game werewolf. It Were- was turned into a VR game werewolves within by Ubisoft, but yeah. it's it's werewolf because that's it's- why they're emphasizing the neighbors thing and all that. Yeah, it's that. This is a board game, video game, movie. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, when you see when you see the trailer, it opens up and it says Ubisoft, and I'm like, I've never heard of an Ubisoft game called Werewolves. So then, and I'm and I'm I'm up to date with video games. It's a VR version of the board game. 
Uh, so that's sick. Uh, and if you don't know what the board game is, like you have a bunch of bunch of friends, and one person's the werewolf, and you have to find out who it is before, like, and before uh, they all every time killed. every time you find people murdered in the night, and then you get together and you try and figure out who among the neighbors is lying and is a werewolf and that kind of yeah. Thing. It's like it's a who done it or um, mafia or cutthroat. All that kind of stuff has used this before. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, among yeah. us, same concept. 100%. Yes, uh, that's what this movie is. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm really into that. I I like the vibe of this. It looks really um, fun. The cast is great. We have yeah. the girl from um I forget I, I always forget her Eileen name. Eileen uh, Vountrop. Uh something. yeah, from the from the AT and T commercial, she was gonna be Squirrel Girl. She oh, won. No. That's a shame. That's that's uh, that episode still exists somewhere. They filmed an episode. I'm gonna find it. Yeah. Um, I thought she looks familiar. I was like, is that Lily from the AT and T commercials? Oh, I mean, she's, she's, she's the name. Yeah, she's the she's the main girl. Um. I'm, cool. I'm, I love werewolf stuff. This is cool. I'm so, I love this game. I've played this game so many. Brandon knows we've played iterations of this type of game for years. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to watch a movie do this concept. Yeah. I'm excited. Like I Mr. actually Rogers. really like this. Yeah. I like the line. It's like, it's like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Both guns. Yes. But both guns. Um, in yes, uh, Ben, they, they filmed a new Warriors pilot for ABC with her as Squirrel Girl, and they did not go to series. No. Yeah. Um, like a, a Mockingbird's show, Wanted, Most Wanted. Yep, Marvel's Most Wanted. Yeah, uh, I would want to see that. Siberia. Ooh, baby, let's get weird. Willem, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, uh, this is like looks like a super artsy introspective movie about him being in Siberia. <laughs> I am very ready to watch Willem Dafoe go on a spirit quest. <laughs> so I'm in. See, like it, the, the like the first half of the trailer, it like he's very isolated, but then you get lots of like montage cuts of like guns and other things and lots of people, and I'm like, oh, so this movie's gonna be all he's, over the place. He's going many places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's on a <laughs> physical journey and yeah, a spiritual yeah, one. Uh, the guy who directed this movie directed Bad Lieutenant, which is a really, really, really weird Nicolas Cage movie where he's a cop. He's like a bad cop, a corrupt cop. Uh, and if it's anything like that movie, then like we're we're gonna have a good old time because it's looks 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 crazy. Nice. Um, drop today, West Side Story. Yeah, Steven Spielberg's. This was an awful trailer. I don't think this is a good trailer. It, you know, this is very much a teaser of you know this, but but I don't know like how well, many young people know this. <laughs> I've never seen West Side Stories. All I know is it's just the Jets and the Sharks. Hold on, yeah. Ben, you've been in Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I have. This that. is Romeo and Juliet, but in New York yeah. too, right? Oh, with music, with music, yeah, yeah. Um, I know people are excited for it. Like, I'm yeah, excited I mean, for it as a yeah. like a Spielberg musical, but like yeah. this was a shitty trailer. Uh, like visually, like it looks good. Like like when it says like like a movie like directed by Steven Spielberg and like they're all walking in like the lights under them. Like yeah. it's it's well shot, but like it's just a bad trailer. Like there's no dialogue. It's all like one. It's all a really slow version of one of the songs. And I'm like, it, sorry Spielberg, it's only a minute. <laughs> I mean, you look at you look at in the heights and you're excited and they're playing a fun song. Like there are fun songs in West Side Story. The, Play one of them. The song choice was the wrong song. For it this, wants it know? wants you to think about the tragedy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I'm not. Look, it looks well shot. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg, but um. <sighs> I still kind of go back to, I wish, I know Spielberg's wanting to do a musical. I wish it was a different musical. Cause for me, the only thing that really matters here is the actual correct racial casting uh, for the film in comparison to the classic. But a lot of this reminds me of the classic. A lot of this honestly just reminds me of the classic and pretty much every stage iteration I've ever seen. It's um, not doing anything there's new, not, yeah. The, the costumes are almost one for one re repeating the colors and the schemes and everything of the classic film. Um, yeah. It's it. I desire something that at least looked a little different and this doesn't. And it, it does make me go like beyond like the casting. Yeah. Why, why do I need this instead of the classic? And that's kind of where I sit still. And this is a person who, because of theater and having been in the show twice is a little oversaturated on West side story. And I'll acknowledge that that's part of it, but like, it's only because I've heard of two, two versions and one of them went really south uh, that have tried to do something new with West Side Story that sounded cool. And everything else is always just kind of traditionally going through the motions again. Maria. And unfortunately to me right now, this feels like that's still that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know who should have directed this is Michael Bay because it's his favorite movie. We would get a Peter Jackson King Kong version of West Side Story with Michael, uh, Michael Bay's West Side Story. 
listen, like people like people can can shock you. Like I I wouldn't be shocked if Michael Bay had a really soft side to him and actually made a really sweet musical, but like mm-hmm. it's never gonna happen. <laughs> but it, like is, to it is legitimately it. his favorite movie. So like it, it's like Christopher Nolan saying his favorite Fast and Furious is Tokyo Drift. Like it's just something you don't expect, but yeah. you love it. Uh, the, only t- the only time anything with involving West Side Story is different every time I watch it is when the San Jose Sharks play the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, that's wait, the only. Did, time. Wait, didn't you say you haven't seen anything West Side Story? I'm making a hockey joke, dude. Oh. Because oh. every time the Sharks and the Jets play each other, all the commentators say, "Yeah, it's West Side Story on ice." Read and, your room. And, read but read you got the room. The wrong man. crowd for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I knew what you were doing. I, I, I got one read of the that. room, Ben. Yeah, sorry. Because <laughs> the sharks are better than the Jets, so I understood. Which one does yeah. Maria play for? Go ahead, Ben. Contest it. Tell me that the white people are better than the Puerto Ricans. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. In this context, do it. Tell me the sharks aren't better than the Jets. Maria. If I, I dare Maria. You. If I had to pick a team, I actually picked the sharks over the Jets. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet the second trailer will be much, much better. I think this was just a bad, bad. It, it, it just, I, I wanted, uh, I talked to Megan a little bit about it and she hadn't watched it yet. And I just talked to her like, yeah, a lot of it just looks like traditional West Side Story. And it's like, man, I, why, why is, if you're going to do that, why did Steven Spielberg have to be the, I know he wanted to do music. Why did he have to be the person to tell the story? Why couldn't we have a Puerto Rican tell the story. Why couldn't we have uh, you know, like I, I feel like if West Side Story has to be revisited, then it should be revisited with a different voice. Yeah, like what what does Spielberg um, bring to it that would be new and I, I still yeah. stand by like we we did it when we talked about Spielberg doing West Side Story a long time ago. I I just truly wish he was doing a different musical. That's really all it comes down to. I know he tried, he wanted to do Wicked for a while and that fell through. I, I appreciate I think, that. I think his, his he would work better with Wicked because it's a little more, he, he works really well with emotions and bombast. And I, I think that would actually work pretty well. I, I agree. And I also don't, I don't think he'd be working against something as strongly like, yes, Wizard of Oz, the film exists, but Wicked gives him a lot of avenue to do his own f- creative freedom stuff. Mm-hmm. And this looks good visually, but it just feels like, I'm seeing the same thing again. Yeah. Are they um, still making a Wicked movie? Or no. did that fall Yes. Through? Yes, sure. they are. Um, someone it's someone like else the Flash. Uh, it's like the Flash. It'll get made eventually. But right now, no. <laughs> All right. But uh, you, you, you know what I mean. Like, I just... Yeah. It, it's It's... Tradition is something that I definitely want to see us break away from a little bit because, like, not only not only is the classic movie already there that you can go see, almost any version you ever see of West Side Story anywhere is kind of going to be the same thing. Yeah. The Conjuring, the devil made me do it. This looks like an action movie. <laughs> yeah. What? How come that cop wasn't more like uh, already aware of the blood all over him until he turned around at the beginning of the trailer? Because <laughs> it's such because it's a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also probably in the movie, but um, no, you're right. Uh, this looks good. Yes, it looks like a Conjuring movie. Good. It looks like a Conjuring movie with the word. That's the, uh, the thing, though, Ben. It doesn't. It it's, doesn't. It, it, I wasn't kind of joking when I said it looks like an action movie. It not that the the, the Conjuring movies don't have like intense things, but like there's just a lot going on. And it just feels like the third movie in a franchise, like ramping it up because it has to. The end, no joke. It reminds me of a Fast and the Furious movie where she's like on the edge and like they're reaching for the hand. That's something that happens in a Fast and the Furious movie. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like it, it didn't feel like a conjuring small spooky house thing, which it doesn't have to always be that. But I like it felt just kind of big. I, I mean, I like them doing this case though. I think that works uh, for I this agree. Oh, film. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think just the way that going about it is very strange for the Conjuring franchise. Sorry, Spice, what you were going to say? What I was going to say is uh, if I wasn't invested in Ed and Warren, or sorry, Ed, Ed and Lorraine, yeah, and I didn't like the Conjuring universe already, this wouldn't be a the horror one. movie trailer that appealed to me. There's not a lot here as a horror movie trailer that I'm gravitating towards right now. Whereas previous ho- Conjuring films have usually at least intrigued me in some way on their horror movie concepts, mm-hmm. while I am also invested in the Conjuring universe. This one is banking on me being invested in Ed and Lorraine and kind of banking on that alone. Yeah. There was another horror movie trailer that we're not talking about called Sep- Separation. Yeah. Uh, that looked more like an intriguing horror movie to me. It might not be a better movie, but it definitely had my attention in terms of horror. Yeah. And this didn't. Uh, which bums me out. While watching this trailer, I'm like, oh, there's Ed and Lorraine. They're talking about devil and spooky shit. Another Tuesday for them. I am happy to see Ed and Lorraine Warren back. I like those characters a lot. 
Not yeah. necessary. I but, like I I speaking to that side of it. I do like um, the uh, premise of Ed being told she's going into the dark again because this was something that was being played with in Conjuring Two. You know, she's she's letting herself get pulled too far. Yeah, and we're we're going back there again. And there is some good, um, good imagery of her, like in like in the exact same scene, being in daylight, transitioning in the dark, and she's like she just appears in the new world. Like that's some yeah, yeah. that is some good visuals. So. Yeah, I just yeah. also feel like the trailer didn't deliver on the moment after that, but I also don't actually want to see the follow through on that. So yeah. it's it's kind of a toss up. So you know, yeah. Um, I'm glad that uh, I forget the actor's name, but uh, the the king of Gon steward of Gondor. Oh, is in uh, this. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The Satanist uh, fringe. Yeah. John Noble. Uh yeah. John Noble. Yeah. Um I'm I'm cool. I'm stoked that he's in it. Uh, that did rules. Yeah. He's yeah. always a committed power force whenever he shows up. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um yeah, I, I'm hoping for the best. I'm more trepidatious than I usually am about a conjuring film. Same. Yeah. Especially the mainline conjuring films. Like I said, this this is the first one not directed by James Wan. Yeah, that is that is a little scary. I liked one and two quite a bit, so yeah, you guys are probably gonna have me see this one anyway. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, you're, you're, in, it. you're, you're in, in it. You're in it. You've I seen have, them all. Yep, yeah, <laughs> I've seen them all. Uh, oh no, I have not seen uh, Yeah Yorona yet. Yeah, you're well, fine. Just have. You're fine. It's it's like it's like tangentially connected. That's like saying okay. I haven't watched Daredevil season three in relation to the MCU. It's not. Okay. Do you do you have a hunkering to find out what happened to the priest and Annabelle? Does he live? You're fine. There okay. you go. There's your answer. Modoc. Uh, Proper this, trailer for Modoc. The, the spirit of Robot Chicken lives. I'm so happy. Uh, mm -hmm. This looks so fun. All, all great cast. Uh, John Hamm, Iron Man. There, there's a line of this that's like your womb destroying head. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's cool that he has a little Modoc daughter with a big head uh, and like mm -hmm. a regular uh, uh, son. Like, it just looks really charming. Like, looks very uh, funny. Yeah, it looks just very funny. Like a really good Patton Oswalt. Like, you get a little bit of Nathan Fillion as Wonder Man. Yeah, that's so good. Um, yeah. I like if tell, it. If you tell your mother any of this, this will be part of the many divorces where it's to the kid's fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this looks really funny. Uh, uh, and the animation for being the stop motion that it is is so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. I'm excited to watch it. I'm glad that, like, all I know all the Hulu shows basically got canceled. I'm glad this one came This through. is the one that I cared about the most uh -huh. to make it. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And then Shang-Chi and the the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, boy. Howdy, guys. Boy. Yeah. I am excited. I Me have a question too. for you guys because yes. I brought it up with Ryan while we were talking about because he's like, this is in San Francisco. You know who else is in San Francisco? And I was like, Ant-Man. And I'm like, do you think this maybe takes place during the five years that everyone was blipped? And then I'm like, oh, well, there goes Ant-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe. I, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, there's there's room for it. I've been wondering if we would get a Marvel movie that would do it. And this feels like this could be the one that does. Uh, I think there's opportunity that it is. This could be about this all happening at, in the form of a power vacuum at the moment hmm. uh, while, while the world is reeling from the half gone. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I really like the look of this. I think it looks really colorful. Um, I, I think the martial arts looks awesome. Yeah, uh, and well, well, well shot, well choreographed. Um, to me, this kind of looks like the film that Mulan desperately wanted to be and did not succeed in. Mm. Um, I, I'm really, I'm really excited for this. This is one of the most dynamic looking Marvel movies, just based on a trailer. It helps ever. that they got a new uh, uh, cinematographer with Bill Pope, who did things like The Matrix and some other really great, like big blockbusters. You can tell. Like, and yeah. it stands out. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I really. Ooh, what Mag says? Fake Adarin. It's also what? What Mandarin. Oh Mandarin. oh Mandarin. Fake Mandarin. Fake Mandarin. <laughs> oh. I get it. You're smarter uh, than us, Mag. I got Mandarin. it. Yeah, but no. Now he's the. No, I think he's talking about Trevor Slattery that he'll maybe oh, show up. Oh sure. I still think um, he'll show up. I, I I hope he does. Yeah. Um, we'll see. It's uh, I like the concept that like the Mandarin is just one of the names he's ever used rather than like his main title. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really stoked for that. Um, this is a kick-ass actor. Yeah. Uh, he's done a lot of Wong Kar Wai films. Um, so I'm excited to see him in this. Uh, it's also cool that they're 
this version of the Mandarin is an original character to the MCU. Yes. And he's going to be instead of, so in the comics, Shang-Chi, his dad is Fu Manchu and it's like the old racial stereotype. And like, it's the same thing. He was raised to become like the assassin that, that his father is and stuff like that. So they're taking that aspect, but they're turning it with the Mandarin, which is awesome, which is super cool. I'm totally into that. Um, and then, and then like maybe actually making it make a little sense in the MCU. Cause like seven people have been the Mandarin. He, um, the, the way they visualize the 10 rings is really cool. Yes, I, I so desperately hope that it's that it's what I think it is, where the rings do this kind of, where they go up and down. It, it doesn't look like it, maybe not, but I do think they are the ten rings, and they're going to change colors depending on what power they're using. Yeah. So the ten rings in the comics, the Mandarin has ten rings, mm -hmm. and they're not going to do that because it's too similar to the stones that Thanos has. It's ten artifacts that you have to find that allow you to do magical stuff. So instead of that, it looks like it's going to be weird armbands, which is, it's a martial arts movie. It doesn't matter. It's all yeah. Fun. Uh, there's some cool like mythological creatures in some of the backgrounds. Uh, yeah, of this. I, yeah, yeah. There's like giant wolves. Uh, yeah, I, uh, lions. I, they're lions. Well, okay, not the, like the lions that we the know. Giant about. things. Yeah, the giant things. Whatever they are. Okay, so you know how in a uh, like in uh, China you have those like those stone lion looking things in yeah. front of oh. those. Got it. I don't know if I they know are. If they look like wolves. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, what were you saying, Ryan? I. I, I, I really hope that's not like the last act and it turns into like what happened with Black Panther. That's the, I hope that's not what it is. I hope maybe it's like a flashback or like a mid-action fight because like we don't need everything to turn into a giant fight at the end. Um, especially if it's like a big martial arts movie, just have two people fight at the end. Like have the dude fight his dad. And that's Although it is going to have a tournament. It is going to have a tournament in it. And Somebody's uh, shield is somewhere. That is definitely in, there's definitely a shield in this trailer. It's not like, yeah. it's definitely there. What that means, it could literally mean nothing. It could be someone in the trailer department like doing this for fun yeah. um it's also about bringing people together who are looking for power so like i maybe what's her name uh vanessa valentina suspipia shows up yeah. or whatever yeah um yeah i i'm super stoked for this i really like um the actor from um Can Can convenience thank you uh, yeah i really like him and uh uh i think he, i think this just looks really cool and he looks really good in the role i'm super stoked Aquafina is like the, the co-lead, like as like the regular friend who gets like sw swept up in it. Uh, she's great. So yeah, yeah, super yeah. stoked. More Marvel, some, baby. Some awesome looking action. Yeah, uh, couldn't couldn't be happier. I've watched this trailer a lot. I'm really stoked. there's there's the one scene the gif of him doing the punch and then the double kick, and that gif yeah. has just been like on repeat in my brain. I'm, <laughs> I am really glad we're getting this so soon. Um, very very pumped. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm eager to find out more about where it's happening and when because i i'm fascinated by the idea that we might explore the time period of the blip yeah yeah all right shall we get into our review then <laughs> let's do this third Come over to this location where I am at and we'll talk about a movie <laughs> we are talking about the new 2021 film Mortal Kombat uh, the new adaptation for the video games. Full spoilers from here on out for this movie. We're just going to go right into it. Um, so if you really care about not knowing anything, wait. We'll talk about another thing soon. Wait a minute. Um, so, but full spoilers, you've been warned. What do we think about this one, uh, Ben? I loved it. I mean, I I really had a great time with this movie. Sparks. Yeah, I had a really good time with it. I think that this follows the trend of the best of the video game movies uh, that we've talked about in our comparisons last week, where it feels like <laughs> when we get these, the best work that they do is by being foundational, uh, making me want to go through that world more. Warcraft did it. Detective Pikachu did it. Sonic the Hedgehog, in a way, did it. Um, I, I think that that's more of what this is. Uh, it And that is what I think keeps it from being like, 100% like fantastic uh this I feel like I still am like this is good I want the thing that you're setting up yeah, yeah. opening me up to in the world too that's what I want mm -hmm. right I uh is this the best video game movie unfortunately it's not did I have a really good time yes um it, like it it's not that that video game movies can't have, you know, uh, depth and like, you know, we've seen the MCU, you know, go beyond just being a regular blockbuster. Um, so, you know, I was going into this movie hoping it would be better than just like your average fighting movie. And in a, in a way, it is just that. It is just a, a really good fight movie. 
um, but it gets the stuff from the game well, so well. Like it, the, the the lore stuff, it's not necessary. It's not necessary, right? Like it is weird that it's a prequel. It's very odd that it, the structure of the movie it's a prequel before the Mortal Kombat tournament. But uh, I agree, the foundation of not only the world but the foundation of the story. It's it's good enough where the sequel movie will just will fully explore everything that I want to get explored. I think the character stuff's really great. I think the script's really bad, but it's bad in a fun way. Uh, yeah, I agree with most of that. I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but it, there are just things that's like you know, just like the the parts are kind of are there to make this to make this better. Um, and, and it's so close. I think I yeah. think it's we almost like- got a really good one. It's like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there's the there's this thing in the well. So just to go right into it, there's this thing in the movie that they changed from the games, which is that if you have this mark, you've been chosen for Mortal Kombat, and you can activate a superpower. They're the X Men. Um, they got the X gene. <laughs> so that, and that's the thing. If you kill if you if you kill the person, you get you get their mark, and that's how Kano shows up in this movie. Um, and you don't need that. That's not an essential uh, an essential part of Mortal Kombat. Is not how they get their powers. Uh, and it just feels like the studio was just was like, we need to explain this. Overcomplicating it is not something I expected to have in this movie. And not that it's yeah. overly complicated, but like, it's just like, if you're a really good fighter, you get chosen for the tournament. That's all it is. It doesn't yeah. have to be Destiny. And it makes it also weird that like, all these completely random people are chosen for Destiny. Well, it's not Destiny. It's not Destiny. Oh, that's true. Because you can are just you kill. the best. That's true. It's just, are you the best? That's true. Which I guess does work for the movie, I suppose. I kind of see if they had just all been like given the mark and that was it. And it's like, you were chosen and yeah. that's it. But it has the added thing of like, if you get killed, that means you ain't good enough. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and yeah. I think that's a nice touch to it. My, I, there are two reasons why I like it overall. Uh, I think it adds a pretty nice arc for Sonya, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, not a complicated character, but they add a nice arc of her, like not being one of them. Yeah. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and what that's going to mean. And she's not even allowed to try to access her powers. And she, she very much earns her place in that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other part of it is that it causes what allows Kano to temporarily be on the good guy side. And, uh, even as that is not something people like, uh, it's something they are doing and they're doing it because Kano is one of them Mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, that, worked that kano's involvement in the way that happened worked and it's very different from the games Mm -hmm. uh and i like that a lot here the fact that he's kind of thrust onto the good guy side because of that situation and that happens only because of the way they handled this marking thing Mm -hmm. i really like that uh that worked a lot for the movie's advantage kano just this works like surprisingly like kano's like the maybe honestly the best part of the movie like josh i don't josh think larson a i think it's a hundred percent that guy uh, uh he improv a lot of his scenes and and that dude's like just tremendously funny brandon you say you watch him in a tv show right he was on superstore yeah yeah um, um like, Ryan, that dude, you, you said in the in the movie there's a bit in the movie where where sonya is like i don't have a mark and he just goes wah wah and ryan you turned it like i thought that was you because it's, it's a soft moment off screen and he's yeah. just wah, wah, and it's like oh wow it's so it's he, very funny he is so funny and like he is he is the comic relief for the movie so most of his lines are jokey and not every single joke works but the dude delivers on them every single time mm-hmm. i think he is like he is tremendous feels consistent his, just, his character feels consistent and it's and i was talking to him before the show like wow kano like he's good in all the movies and he's really fun in the game is kano secretly the best mortal kombat character because like he's kind of radical he's an awful person but he's really funny definitely with this movie i mean Going back on the very, on the ninety five Mortal Kombat and what little of the games I have played, it's just like oh yeah, there's Kano. He's there. He is. It's like you gotta have Kano there. But with this movie, it's like yo, Kano is freaking awesome. Like I just love how when he's in the pit with Liu Kang, and then Liu Kang does the spamming oh. low kick, which apparently is so that part. Um, I was talking to my roommate because my roommate saw the movie while we were actually in the theaters. Oh. And he was like, "Oh yeah, people spam that move in the games all the time." Yeah, yes, one hundred percent. That's yeah. a common fighting game thing. Yeah, not yeah. even just Mortal Kombat fighting. Yeah, games. just spamming yeah. A mo- one move. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, but you I, know what? The, the 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 sweep kick looks a lot better in this movie than it did in the last movie. Mm-hmm. That's true. Look, true. Ryan and I were talking about it, and I think it might be one. A, like, I think this movie might have the best translation of gameplay mechanic that you encounter as a player mm-hmm. to screen and it's that moment it is the spam <laughs> kick and him calling it out and being like what do you just know that one move and then trying to fake it and he's like ah shit <laughs> and just yeah exactly that whole scene of him it's like he goes ah 
bad. Like, and he keeps, and Luke Kane just keeps doing the move. And then he just, just the dialogue and Kano just being a dick is just so funny. Yeah. My favorite character in all of Mortal Kombat is actually Kung Lao. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like that character. And I think he's really good in this movie. I think he's great. I, yeah. I, I think some there's a lot of characters in this movie, and unfortunately, the ones that we want to ha- got to see more of don't. We don't see more of um, who should be the main characters of the movie. Like honestly, like I love all these characters, like Liu King and Kung Lao. Like they're the Shaolin monks, baby. Give it to them. But like mm-hmm. they're they, they they have a presence, specifically Kung Lao. That dude just like oozes cool, and he's also so snarky to Kano. It's just so fun. Uh, and he he shows up by coming out of the out of the floor and throwing that. That's so cool. I didn't expect mm-hmm. a uh, Kung Lao teleport, but that's how he introduces himself. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, sick. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. The, the uh, when the second the hatch, because like when we see Liu Kang and they go to and they go to the Temple of Raiden, and I'm like, okay, where's Kung Lao? And then we don't see Kung Lao for a bit. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then when he shows up, I'm like, Kung Lao, yeah. When, there's so he's got my favorite fatality in the whole movie, where he puts the where the where the the hat becomes the chainsaw, and the he just saw? goes flawless victory. Man, that is I'm like uh, yeah, that is disgusting. And that is like again, that's straight out of the games, and like showing you everything. And I'm like, they're willing to commit to a dude's hat being lodged into the ground and turning into a buzzsaw. Like yeah. you, a lot of people don't like this movie, and I get it. But it's one of those things where like you're in or you're not, and like I'm into, I'm into. Hey, this guy's about to get his soul sucked. <laughs> like I'm into it. I can't help it. I was very sad that Kung Lao was the one who ate it in this movie. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I mean, also it 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 happens in the games. Kung Lao dies, mm-hmm. and Kung Lao comes back. And I I fully expect that Kung Lao will come back. Kano will come back. Goro. Goro will come back. All the all these characters are coming back, and I'm really happy. There's a line in this movie where Shang Tsung acknowledges that, where he's like, death is just a portal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I am all about, if these films continue, being a franchise that is not about death mattering, but about it being a, just the loss in battle. And you come back again to for the rematch. Because look at Scorpion. Because that's all mm-hmm. I want. Yeah. I just want, f- screw that. Because that's what, what Mortal Kombat cool. has always been. You kill your opponent and you still end up fighting them later in the game. That's what I want the films to be able to do is fully embrace that. Like it's rematch. Yeah, they died in this movie, and here they are. They're back with vengeance. Here rematch. we go. Rematch. What was that line that that Scorpion says when he shows up? I I, I waited I, in hell just to beat you. I have risen from hell to kill you. Yeah. I've risen from hell to kill you. Well, like honestly, it's a bad line, but the dude delivering it is awesome, and it's in Japanese, so like it's not in English. So like it just seems cool. <laughs> anyway. yeah. it, it is a if you watch anime, read manga, or whatever. The non-Japanese translated lines when they do special attacks is way better than when they translate it to English. Just saying. Ma kasan po ma ma special beam cannon. <laughs> I'm going to what a it's like uh go to bleach when Biaki Akuchi goes Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi. That's a lot scarier than Thousand Cherry Blossom Death. That, that is true. That's Just saying. You're anyway. very true. <laughs> Not to get too far off topic, of yeah. Combat, but um, I was uh, like most of the trailers, like the Scorpion and, and Sub Zero stuff. So I thought that uh, that fight would come way earlier, but mm-hmm. where it shows up is really cool. How Scorpion uh, reveals himself by throwing the, the 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 thing, and then the music plays. You're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the Mortal Kombat theme from 1995, like the, the the epic thing. It is it is the theme of the movie, and it's it's an orchestra like slow down version throughout the whole movie, which is awesome. Uh, but then you do get the hyper intense version during the big fight at the end. Yeah. Um, and it is unfortunate they do show a lot of the fight in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah. but it, but it is still an extended fight with more moves, and it still looks sick on the big screen. Right. There are there are a, a criticism of the trailer. There are things in this movie that I would have liked to have seen in the movie and not in the trailer. Yeah. I was surprised at how many of those moments were were in the trailer. Yeah, uh, yeah, it definitely. I mean, that's why the trailer is so good because it it really hypes you up, but it kind of yeah. hyped you up too good because it showed you a lot of the good stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Liu Kang doing his stupid like super kick, like, and he just doesn't stop and he just keeps going. Like that's that's why I'm here. I I'm also, but on the same token, like I'm grateful none of Kung Lao's action was in the trailers. Yeah, we knew yeah. he was yeah. in the movie. We saw him in an image, but uh-huh. like like in the part of the trailer, but we don't see any of his action. Beats. Yeah, and I'm so grateful. So, th- you know, it's on both. Sides. Win some, you lose some. One of my favorites is we saw a screenshot of it in the trailer, and that's um, Liu King's fatality. Because in the mm-hmm. games, he turns into a dragon, then bites your, and then bites bites you. Whereas this one, he just set like 
brings forth a fire dragon, which bites you instead. And I, because when I first saw that, my interpretation was, okay, this is like the dragon blood blessing him with the power of fire or something like that. No, this is just Luke King doing Luke King stuff, and that's his fatality. I, I mean, like, it's, Dark, it's, it's Arcana. It's yeah. really cool that they that they lean into Luke King having a power. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something that's the first. Hmm? I, I don't mind them leaning into all of them having a power. It works for me almost on everyone except Jax. Jax is <laughs> oh. the one that doesn't really work for me because I'm like, what what kind of power is that? Like, what would he get if he didn't already have robot yeah, arms? Yeah, the, prob- the problem is it's like, this is like a magical destiny thing. Yes. And Jax is a technological character. He is a dude with robot arms. So mm-hmm. when you're just saying, oh, the magic just makes his robot arms better, you it's it's a leap of logic that's like it's even hard for this movie. Yeah, it's like, what it what it is. It's the it's the Mecha Godzilla being powered by a re, by a reading. Yeah, yeah, or by it's, like the, the the hatred of the dead monster. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just the it's just the one that goes too far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it doesn't bother me too much because everything else in the movie is silly. No, but it, I mean, it like, is the one I can, where I can accept yeah. it. But like in terms of me analyzing the choice yeah, to yeah. make this power thing, Jax is the one where I'm like. You kind of you kind of broke the bench on that because I was wondering because like we see him getting like his his like his skeletal arms, mm-hmm. um, and I'm like, okay, so does he not get does he not have an Arcana or is Arcana like because in the games like he uses his arms to, like do shockwave attacks and shoot stuff like Sonya does yeah yeah so I'm like is that going to be his Arcana that he uses his arms as a conduit right. no he just gets better arms yeah, yeah. so whatever some of, some of the things that that are missing in the in the first Mortal Kombat film not to compare too much um, but um, some of the powers aren't in it such as Liu Kang doesn't have his fireballs and Kano mm-hmm. doesn't have his laser eye I was yeah. happy that both of those are in this movie um, yeah. that yeah. they lean into the idea that the that these people have powers I just kind of wish they just like um accepted that the audience would also be okay with it uh mm-hmm. so reptile uh is it, cool i love that they used one of his most insane looks when he's straight up a reptile monster and they call the reptile size off which is the race of creature he is right so they're going so deep in the lord like yo that's from the universe of the, riz- the lizard people get that guy i'm yeah, like yeah. oh man they like it's one of those things where like they which care means enough. you can see more reptile stuff too exactly yes. like they care yeah. enough because the yeah. mortal kombat universe like when when you take over another realm you take over their universe so like you merge the universes and that's what outworld's doing so outworld has thousands of different races living on his planet like secret wars um i yeah, I, I really oh i think i'm cutting out no, no you're, you're fine you're good you're good damn it Oh no! Oh, he, he is, is cutting design. out. Okay. Uh, so real quick, I'll say while we're waiting for Brandon to get back that like uh, the one thing I do like about the power bit with the Ar- Arcana and everything is that you have Kano who's like, oh, I'm gonna get power. I'm gonna get a superpower. And, and he's trying to figure it out, and he's like, oh, I see. Like these powers are random and that kind of concept, and that's something that Kano's leaning into. Um, you're back, Brandon. Uh, you can go ahead now. No, it's fine. I'm still delayed. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um. But yeah, so Kano's Kano's like eagerness about the powers and him conceptualizing it. He's like, oh, it's just random and all that kind of stuff. And him getting blasted with the first fireball. He has one of my favorite like encountering that kind of stuff. Reaction. Like he's already fought a reptile dude, but he's like, hold on. Who cares about the prophecy thing? Hold up. You just threw a fireball. How'd you do that? And he's like, are we going to get superpowers? Is that things are going to happen? And Luke Kang just puts the hand on his shoulder. He's like, the hell (laughs) (laughs) so put on Kano, so good uh it it, it worked really well kano carries a lot of the energy of the film and i think more than that with the problem part of the problem that i think kano exemplifies about the film is that super serious too much of the tone is too serious too many characters are too serious i would argue that kung lao is one of the lighter uh, in a sense, but he even he's a little too down. Him for and me. Luke King should be the light, the, the optimist guys. Uh, uh, Jax could do with a little bit of a punch up in his in his attitude, and I I do think in comparison to like the original Mortal Kombat movie, I miss Luke King being able to banter a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, being able to joke a little bit. Um, he doesn't need to be Kano and he doesn't need to be Johnny Cage, but he can he can throw a good one liner out and that kind of yeah, thing yeah. and have some fun. And I wish this Luke King was doing that too. Yeah, one of the things I was kind of, I, I I'm trying when I was watching this movie, I was trying not to think too much of 1995, but I love that Liu Kang in the, mm-hmm. the original Mortal Kombat movie, and when when Kung Lao and Liu Kang were essentially just yeah, the hair is gorgeous, and I was like. I actually like this Luke King's hair too. I'm not gonna lie. I will say just real quick, Ben. Uh, w- when you first meet Luke King and the sunset, you immediately know it's Luke King because he also has this head, the hair, and the belt. Uh, and you're like, oh, it's like it's like. Also, I heard you, 
I also, go, I heard you behind me go, oh my God, it's Luke King. I'm like, yeah, it is. I, I was a nerd in this whole movie. I, I know, no, uh, dude, we are both also always cheering. Yeah. Anyways, the point I was going with was like Luke King, when they, when him and Kung Lao were essentially just like drilling into Kano, mm -hmm. just like constantly drilling in. Kung Lao was one who was like, bitch, you ain't got to do shit against me. And Luke King was like more of the, no, let's, let us be, he's kind of right, but let's, he's, I felt like he was trying to be more a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Whereas then, the back. Five, back in 95, here's Johnny Cage, like, hey, here's my luggage. He just takes the luggage and chucks it into the water. Yeah, and I don't need him to be the character from that movie because that's not mm -hmm. the character from the games necessarily. Sure. I just, what I do wish had carried over from that movie is that Liu Kang was able to, I, just somebody needs to be able to have a lighter sense about things. And Liu Kang would make sense because Liu Kang is in yeah. many ways the protagonist we're supposed to have. Which brings us to Cole. Uh, Cole mm. is our protagonist of the movie and he is like a blank piece of wood. He's a, um, he's and so a there's piece nothing, of toast. There's nothing to latch onto there. And that's why I want so many of the other characters to be better because he's just stoicism incarnate. Yeah. So I needed somebody else to be throwing something else that that was in that more fun energy that wasn't just Kano. Yeah. And Luke Kang would have made a lot of sense because we need to really invest a lot in Luke Kang for the future. What worries me is that like Cole is going to be like the <clears throat> Luke Kang like equivalent now. And like those characters won't be as important to the story as, as they that's need the to. thing. That's the thing that's so, that's so bothersome to me is that Luke Kang isn't the main character. Cause he's the main character, the, at least the first couple of mortal combats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it, I, go it, ahead. I was going to say it. I forgot. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it could have been fine like for this one. I didn't need, oh, because I, I don't need you to be repeating the Mortal Kombat film, and I know that was something they were trying to avoid, which is part of the reason there's no tournament yeah. in this one. They're trying not to necessarily make that movie again right now, and I get that. Um, and I don't think Liu Kang needed to be that person. I actually like the concept of someone else on the outside getting to Liu Kang halfway through the movie by way of Sonya and Jax. Yeah. I like that concept a lot. And I don't even... Cole Young has no character, but I don't mind the concept of the character of him well, as I was gonna, the concept I was gonna, of how it relates. But I was going to say that 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 the thing is that I liked about Cole is that I think the studio mandate to create a new character, they made it work uh, for the most part. I know he has no personality, which I agree about, but his connection to Hanzo to Scorpion um, being a descendant of lineage, I think that works really well for the core of the film. Yeah, um, he he doesn't feel like a, a, a wasted character. Um, he does feel like he is kind of essential to the story, even if he mm -hmm. could do with a better personality. What, yeah. what this film definitely nailed leaps and miles above the original film and uh, in general is Scorpion and Sub-Zero's relationship, their rivalry, what happened, uh, the whole opening of the film uh, taking place in the past, what we see with Hanzo and, and Bihan. In 1617, I didn't expect that, and I love is, it. Is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I really, mm -hmm. really like that. They set up something that I think a lot of people can care about. Like that. That That is the, the fight, the rivalry that you're watching, and you're watching Sub-Zero and waiting for Hanzo to come back and get him. And what's, uh, what's dope is... Uh, like they have this rivalry, but you don't really know why that these clans are fighting against each other, which mm -hmm. is why in Mortal Kombat 2, you realize that like they were pitted against each other by Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, and this was all a yes. ruse to get more power. Yes, and there's still room for that and yeah. all that. I, I'm I'm happy for that. Yeah. And uh, I think yeah. that that's done really, really well. Uh, I just, so Cold attaches to that really well. However, once you get to the end of the movie and we have Scorpion, we no longer need coal. Yeah. <laughs> so before we talk about that, because I also want to talk about one of the things I was actually scared as I was watching the movie was that, I mean, Cole, I mean, I, I, he's, he's okay. I don't hate him. I don't love him. He's like, he's just there. Yeah. And, but as the movie goes on, I'm just sitting there and like, he's having flashbacks. You see Scorpion in hell. You see the, um, the blade, the, the spear. And I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking, I know Scorpion's going to show up in this movie. God, I really hope it doesn't turn out to be Cole. Like, oh, Scorpion, yeah. like possesses Cole in a way. And then I was like, re I really don't want that to happen. Man, boy, I'm 100% the opposite opinion of you. Um, oh. oh, it's what I wanted. Yeah, what I, I oh. wanted. What I wanted was Sub-Zero to murder his wife and daughter. I wanted oh. them to die. I wanted it to be brutal and tragic and a repeat of history. And in that moment, he he is possessed by the spirit of Hanzo. And guess what? Now he's Scorpion. That's what uh, I thought was going to happen. Because, yeah. because Ben, mm -hmm. I don't want Cole in any more movies. 
I want Scorpion in movies. Yeah. But I don't want Cole in any more movies. And that is tied to an origin of of Scorpion. Or, like, he's losing the fight, and the only way that he can live is to be bonded with Hanzo. And now they are Scorpion. Dragonheart. That's what I I wanted, because... Cole serves no good purpose because he has no personality to continue in the films past this. I don't want him to be a mainstay. So that logically made a lot of sense to me. He should become the MS, the, the vessel of Scorpion. So the, the way I was going with it was I want to see the actor who plays Scorpion. Like, I really like him, like, wearing the Scorpion thing. Like, the uh, wearing the Scorpion outfit, outfit. That's my, that's what I was going, that's what I was going for. When, I, I 100% agree with you. I knew that we were going to see that actor as Scorpion. So what I thought mm-hmm. would happen is once they are bonded, we see him. We don't okay. get to see, we don't see Cole anymore. Like if we don't see Cole anymore, cool. Because I, I agree. I want to keep Scorpion. But I was just like, like if he's like, hey, since you. Really cool oh. way to do his um, his fi- his uh, fire breath. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. His, like, 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 you still see the skull, the, the his skull as he's doing the breath. That was it, really it starts, cool. His face like starts to burn away as he does. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the trailers, we see Cole. We see Cole armored up. But in the trailers, I didn't know what that was. I thought maybe it was just some body armor that he was wearing. I actually really like the idea of his arcana being the defense that he doesn't have. Because he's a dude mm. who takes punches and he deals punches, but he doesn't defend. So his mm. defense is like he has the Black Panther suit where he can use vibranium and push out the energy that he gets punched by. Yeah. I think that's an awesome idea for the power. Uh, I don't want him to be the guy we follow for an entire franchise. I, I want Luke King. Like when Luke King shows up, I'm like, yeah, it's like started like edging Cole off to the side, maybe. It felt or... to me like Guardian, like like I was gonna say Guardians of the Galaxy, but it feels like it feels like a team up movie. It's not a traditional yeah. Mortal Kombat thing. It's like getting the gang together. Yes, uh, and then they all team up at the end. And like, this is this is what in the Mortal Kombat film originally was like the first twenty minutes, which is just like Raiden assembling the. Group. Yes, this is the this is all assemble the group because Shang Tsung is trying to cheat and stop you beforehand. Yeah, and I'm pumped for that. I think that works really well. I think if we can get another film, then that can be the tournament and it can be the tournament with like without having to hold back like it can throw you into the deep end and yeah. really go for it and i'm glad that we could do that um i think that's a smart way to play it but i agree like we just don't we don't need the ease you into the franchise character or mm-hmm. setup or story this yeah. is this is uh mila in monster hunter this is sonic being taken into the human world in sonic the hedgehog yeah um this this is Warcraft and Pokemon don't do this, but uh, all, a lot of these other video game films do. And that's why Warcraft and, and Pokemon are some of the best. <laughs> yeah, because they just they just say welcome to the world. Yeah, deal. Um, <laughs> and and I wish that this was kind of in the same space because Cole. I don't mind them making a new a new original character. I do, I really like the idea of him being connected to Hanzo. He just has to have something going for him, and they didn't do that. Like. Um, a friend of the podcast, Pi, told me that he felt like the characters are really shallow in this film. Uh, that they're that they're all really shallow. And I'm like, honestly, I only feel that way about Cole. The rest mm-hmm. of them, I'm kind of okay with because they are more or less their Mortal Kombat characters. Yeah, there's not that much more they need to be doing in this movie to be those characters. Yeah, I understand like feeling like they're underexplored, but I think Cole is the only issue. Listen, really, I got my set. I got my character development when Jack said I did six tours, mother effer. <laughs> <laughs> That's he says that in the game and when jack said that i'm like that's so stupid that I, he would just say that out loud against somebody's fighting i love it uh speaking of the fights are incredible yeah i have no complaints oh. about any of the choreography like it's it's like some of the editing is a little fast i will say in some of the fights but like overall like real real good this is his first directing gig simon mcquade or mcquad whatever his name is um it is yeah. bloody it is gory the Boy, fatalities bloody. the fatalities we get it's just like God, am I nineteen? Am I back in the nineties putting the blood code in on my Sega Genesis to play Mortal Kombat? Because I am here for it. So let's talk about some of the minor characters who are there just for the fights. We got Molina, we got Raiko, we got Cabal. Um, all goofsters. Uh, I like Cabal a lot. He's just I love a, Cabal. He's just an evil Arcano. If that could be, if that's. He, it's so great because we we played MK MK nine where Cabal starts as a cop and then becomes this guy. He's got he's got great Taskmaster energy. Oh my god, you're 100 percent right. You're so right. Um, but yeah, he first meets Kano. Was like Kano, you suck. I hate you. Eat a dick. And I'm just, and Kano's just like, oh, you're right. Um, I loved it. Uh, their interactions are great. That is like that is Cabal. Like him. That is that's just them. And then they're yeah. not deep characters, but they're fun characters. 
Um, I I really like uh, Natara. Natara, uh, talking about she's uh, yeah. It's cool. It's cool the way they use them. I Ryan was like, oh man, Rika, he's so stupid, and I'm like, right, we gotta have places to go. No, yeah, that's for, what I love for future films, and I'm glad we have that. Um, Rico and Melina are from MK4 and MK5, so like they're using these like characters that like nobody really cares about as fodder for the good fight. So I think I think that there is possibility that when we see the actor playing Melina again, she'll be Katana. Yeah. And I like mm -hmm. that idea. I like that being the way that we work to Katana that when they first meet her, they're going to think of Melina 100%. instead. Um, I fan. like that. I like that reversal a lot. You see Katana's fan. Yeah. 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 Um, there's uh, the, all the characters were of that level that we talked about all the villains, which is why it was so weird to me that Goro was in the movie. Cause I was like, Oh, he, he kind of stands out as the outlier. Goro's kind of just like, like the attack dog. He doesn't yeah. have, like. Oh. I think Goro's inclusion was was good and also important because that's the thing that I think for like both for for MK diehards who really like the original film, it's kind of like a you you get you get like a kick ass Goro. Like no offense to the puppeteering, but like a, a for the modern age Goro on film, which is something I think a lot of people wanted to see. Yeah. I like the way they homage it with his shadow. Uh, yeah. coming through and everything. It felt very much like the presentation of introducing Goro in the in the first one. Mm -hmm. um, I I think it needed to be there to sell you on where the film can go. Because like, yes, Melina and Natara look cool and we're seeing a lot of power stuff, but Goro tells you how weird it can get. Mm -hmm. Goro yeah. sells you and the main, like the less inclined to Mortal Kombat audience. This is this is how wild we're going to go. We're going to go really wild. Yeah, and man. I think Goro's necessary for that. Yeah. I mean, we got like an evil flash in this movie with like two like like spinning sticks. We got a vampire lady. Like, yeah, I'm, we're going places. It's cool. Yeah, I really, um, honestly, I really like the movie. Um, I think I don't think it's uh, quite as good as like, what we talked about last week. I think Mortal Kombat. Um, I was hoping Mortal Kombat would be the one to beat. Uh, would be like the like really great one. Yeah. Warcraft and Detective Pikachu are really good. This kind of falls under them. Um, but not, yeah, I'm not too far. Yeah, like like honestly, I they're they're not the same movies, but I have very similar feelings compared to the 1995 movie. Like, there's yeah. not a lot of deep character stuff, but it's really fun character stuff, and the fights mm -hmm. are good, and I'm here to be entertained, and it does entertain. Raiden would be better than he has. Oh, I love stuff. this Raiden who is a little more he's a little more uh, uh, mean. I like that. Uh, it's like very anti Christopher Lambert. But mean, yeah. but mean. Well, like Lambert was a little like. Snide. He's just cheeky. He's snide. Uh, yeah. This this feels like a Raiden who who's like get your shit pushing, together, pushing you. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. I I kind of am here for it. Yeah, because uh, Raiden has a dark turn in the future of the games, so it's cool that they're establishing that he can be this type of character from the get go. Is what yeah. is what I'm yeah. liking about it. Um, I am very interested. Much like we talked about with Detective Pikachu or Warcraft, Power Rangers, we talked about it in the theater sparks. Um, I think the Tomb Raider. I think this is a really good first, like, here's the world we're introducing you to this world. And I, I hopefully the sequel to this one, if it gets it, which it should, um, will be better than the sequel to the last one. Yeah. Uh, so the and budget is a cool place to go. Yeah. The budget of this movie was 90 million and it's made 50 million. It's made, de it's made good money for, again, being in a pandemic when theaters are just opening. So like if plus, this plus HBO max like watches, like, we hopefully this will secure a sequel. They signed on for four movies, so like they have a, they have a plan. Um, that's, that's really good. cool. Uh, I, w I don't want to. Mm. So I had a blast going to this movie, but it part of me wants to say that the, the reason why I had such a big blast with this is that I wasn't trying to be too critical because it was the first movie I saw in a theater in over a year. Sure. So part yep. of me because it's been. I mean, don't get me wrong. Watching movies like Godzilla vs Kong in the, in the comfort of my own home that's cool. But I have missed just going to the movie theater with you guys and seeing these fights on the big screen yeah. and walking and just seeing like when you see the spear and you hear Scorpion yell, get over here. We all knew it was coming. It was in the damn trailer. But him just seeing that yelling, get over here and just pulling Sub-Zero. And I was like, I was like, yes, I think, I think go. Opening uh, the opening like ten minutes is really really strong and it really sets mm -hmm. you up for like the tone and the violence of the movie and and how cool Scorpion is and it's, it is unfortunate Scorpion's not in the movie as much as I hoped him to be but like the, the times he is in the movie it's great because that I, act that actor is great. And I, I thought think that some of that spear stuff was awesome. Oh, yeah. I think it leaves room. I'm I'm glad that we aren't oversaturating in too many of the characters in a way. Mm -hmm. 
again, like this is me wanting to have faith, like, and as I think they are, that they can make more because I think they've left themselves a lot of room to grow yeah. rather than uh, like uh, already advancing these characters. And especially if these are going to be characters who are going to die and come back repeatedly, yeah. like you have to leave them some room to, to run. Um, and I think that they have done that. I do yeah. love um, Bihan who's, who's sub zero um, at, in the, in the ends of the fight, he takes off the blue portions of his armor <clears> and then he looks like noob Saibot, who is who he becomes in the next game. Uh, just little touches like that. Like it's just, you can tell the people like, Again, it's you don't always need video game stuff in your video game movies, but when it's done well, like it's just really appreciated. Like, oh, like you actually care about this product. Yeah. Um, what would what's Johnny Johnny Cage has has have a power in the in the games? Yeah, he he does like jump kicks that like green jump kicks, and he shoots green uh, green orbs and stuff. Okay, so okay, so they got a yeah, thing. They like don't have to make up a thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. A, yeah, he has like a like a green attack. Yeah. Everybody okay. has something that you could call close to a power. Absolutely. I have a question for you, Ryan. As a hey. Mortal Kombat, as more, I'm more of a Mortal Kombat expert. Um, Hello. Um, why do so many people from Earth work for Outworld? Um, because um, this is the tenth tournament, right? That's happening. So it's been this this tournament has been happening for generations on Earth, right? We are just now finding out about it. The villains are trying to get in on the ground level. So when Earth gets taken over, they aren't slaves. They are working with the people. Oh. Taking care of her. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was always it's, curious it, about this. It's like a Loki situation, or like the bad guys are working or working for someone. So like when something bad happens, they don't get hurt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll, a solid endeavor. I'd like to see more of. I don't know if I have too much more to say. No, I think I think what it needed, like if it was going to truly stick, like a character developed great landing, was what we were kind of. I know Brandon Ryan and I were all kind of in a similar mindset of. I think. It would have been brutal. It would have been tragic. But the killing of Cole's family and him falling into to having to bond with, with Hanzo yeah. is what would have cemented like a full arc, both about Cole and from where we started at the beginning with Hanzo and Bihan. That all would have really come together. Yeah. I think it would have left an impact for the film emotionally mm -hmm. that the ending just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and again, like, yes, I also just want to move on from Cole because I'm not invested in him, but that would have made me feel like all of that worked in a big way as this one film, if, you know, forbid that we didn't get another, I would say that this was a solid full one story yeah. in that sense. Yeah. And it lacks that punch. Yeah. So the way Sparks, you explained earlier about how Hanzo essentially takes over the body and the face we see is Hanzo or that actor's whose name I completely forgot. Um, you see him taking over the body of Cole because Cole's like, "Hey, my my fa my wife and kid are dead. I'm out." And he's like, "Can I have your body? I'll be. I'll, I'll take consumed, some. I'm out." He's consumed yeah. by vengeance, like Scorpion was, so it's easy yeah. for them to do like, "Oh, I'm gonna help you get your revenge, and I'll also be getting my yeah. revenge." Yeah, because what I was scared of is that Cole, like Cole, becomes Scorpion, like that actor playing Cole. Yeah, he he wears the robe. He's Scorpion, and we only see Ghost Hanzo, like yeah, yeah. guiding his hand, mm -hmm. but. I mean, because at first I was, because I was, because I just really like that actor, the actor they picked for Scorpion. I think he's rad. Yeah. I, I'm like, give him more cool shit to do. Mm -hmm. But since, I mean, Scorpion goes back to the Netherworld and we're always going to, he's going to be in Mortal Kombat, the second film, if there is one, fingers crossed. I'm like, give him more cool shit to do, please. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really just, I think that, that it needed that for a real emotional story mm -hmm. to click yeah. into this film, which is mm -hmm. just, this is absent that in a big way. Um, but there's so much that's done right in realizing the characters and certainly in realizing the fights that uh, I, I, if you like Mortal Kombat, I can't imagine how you wouldn't enjoy watching this. Like it's just a good mm -hmm. time of enjoying that kind of stuff. This is a fight movie. Yeah. It's a fighting game. This is good. This is solid. It's, this is, it is this and not only and not only is it a fight game, or a, it is a fight. Not only is it a, a fighting movie, a really good action movie. It's funny. Yeah, you know, I know, I know. Kano carries ninety percent of the jokes, but when Cole meets Sonya and she says Mortal Kombat, uh, it it kind of gave me uh, vibes of that, like of um, uh, Charlie Day's character from Always Sunny, where it's like you know, where it's like trying to explain everything with the string theory, and he's like, yeah. I have no, don't know if you have noticed, they spelled it wrong. Yeah, yeah. They just they need yeah. to be willing to lean more into the cheekiness. I think beyond Kano of the yeah. franchise, and hopefully they'll they'll kind of come away that way with that lesson because I think a lot of reviews have called it out where it's like, look, Kano works, but we need more of the movie to work in that direction. Not necessarily being an asshole and yeah. side and all that, but yeah. being aware of the kind of movie. It yeah, because without Kano, this movie is is 
if he wasn't Much in this more movie, it would have been so serious. And like, I, yeah. it, like we would have needed something to make me chuckle. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Should we read it? Yes, let's do it. All right. Ben. No, I don't want to go first. I'm going to give it a 7.5. I think it's really, really great. Uh, I think the fights are great. Uh, not a lot to it. Kind of like the first one, but like, it's just a better version of what I want from a Mortal Kombat movie. 7.5. Yeah. It's certainly denser than the first one though. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Sparks. Yeah. I give it an eight. Uh, ben? I'll give it an 8 as well. I will give it a 7.5. What's up, um, 7.5? Crew? Normally, I kind of feel like probably a 7, but I did enjoy the fight sequences a whole lot, so I bump it up to the 7.5. Again, like we kind of said earlier, like there's a lot like Falcon and Winter Soldier where the most important thing it needed to do, it succeeded very well at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that that earns it very high points. Like, this, yes, f- things fell to the wayside in other ways, but the main point it needed to nail, it nailed incredibly yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Like, I will definitely be like rewatching certain scenes again and again because, like, man, doesn't get any better than a big <laughs> than a buzzsaw fatality. <laughs> I love right. the Scorpion Sub Zero fight. I, I'll probably watch. I'm okay with watching the whole movie just to get to that fight scene by it's itself. Awesome. Yeah, just I love that. I, and also every time when uh, you hear the music. Uh, crescendo and it's like let's go i want to re-download i probably will start re-downloading mortal kombat 10 on my ps4 just because this guy over here did that i'm gonna uh, well yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna practice so that we can game yeah yeah, yeah. i gotta do that uh, uh base from arcade um okay book club oh oh i had one other thing this is not a review of the movie comment. This is a, I want this franchise to go so long that Warner brothers gets stupid about it. Like uh, space jam oh, gosh. because I want crossover characters. Oh yeah. <laughs> I they want them to be more- like, we pulled this person from <laughs> another realm. And it's like, it's I'm trying to think of a Warner brothers specific. They one made that's MK not like, versus DC. I'm no, saying. I'm not, but I'm trying to think like non DC character. Like it's the nun or something <laughs> like <laughs> Oh my god. The demon Valak from yeah. the Conjuring. Valak shows up. Her, like she fights the, Scorpion. Oh my god. I kind of want us to get Valak is the next character in the Mortal Kombat crossover. That, that she's the, the guest character. Because what I was thinking is I'm like, boy, how stupid would it be if the next one, they're doing the tournament for the realms, and in the audience is like Bugs Bunny and shit. And like, <laughs> you know, just the Space Jam Harry horse Potter. version, but I'm like, you know, I wouldn't mind if we get like five deep and they start doing some crossover characters. God, Mad Max shows up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right, book club. Book club. Book it up. <clears throat> sparkles, sparkles, sparkles. Yes. Take it away. Oh, okay. Um, hey, guys, we're talking about all new Captain America, which was written by Rick Remender with art by Stuart Eminen. And, um, it's it's six issues. Wow, I took one picture. Um, it's six issues, and uh, I think it's rather good. This is my second time reading it because um, I revisited all of Sam Wilson's Captain America stuff back when we were doing Secret Empire. Heck yeah. um, but I I do really like this. Uh, I it's a solid little. This is this is Rick Remender's like chunk on uh, Sam Wilson's Captain America time. His um, unfortunate <clears throat> only got six issues. Yeah, before Secret Wars. Uh, ended his run and he left Marvel. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's it's really nice. Um, I definitely like what what Spencer comes in and does with Sam Wilson afterwards. Mm-hmm. I think he picks up a lot of stuff really well. There's a lot of good stuff here. Um, certainly, uh, it, this feels like a a not focusing on the race stuff, but like a Sam Wilson picking up the burden of of being Steve in a major way, especially having to face like some of Steve's greatest foes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the story is executed really well. It's very beautiful to look at. Um, I think that there's some really great action panels with Sam. Uh, I love the way he interacts with working with Red Wing. I think the plot is really good. Um, I, I I'm really happy about it overall. Yeah. The end of the book, Red Wing turns into a vampire. Oh my yeah, God. He yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Yo, I had to remind myself that Red Wing was a real falcon and not an actual mechanical bird. That he yeah, has one of the, one of the things that I one of the things that I always forget about Sam Wilson in the comic books is that he can he has the power to talk to birds, and you see him command the power of hundreds and hundreds of birds. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, I love Sin trying oh to pull god. a secret empire on Bro, him. Bro, I love oh mm-hmm. my god. Uh uh Cynthia, yeah, Sin, uh Red Skull's daughter. Um she's awesome. She is she is just as bad as her dad. Uh uh I'm glad that she she stuck around. I think that's a, that's a recommender joint too. Yeah. Um 
I, I love, I actually really like the use of Ian Rogers. Um, uh, Nomad. Yeah. Nomad. Um, I thought, I think he's really a nice addition into this story. I think the, the way they turn around and the way they do the, the brutal killing of him by Zemo is really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Zemo. I think Zemo's written really well. I Hell think yeah. Bartrock's written really well. He, uh, uh, Romero is so funny in this. Dude, yeah. All the villains were constantly right. just criticizing America. Okay, uh, what are you, the captain of diabetes? Uh, uh, he writes a great Crossbones. I think Crossbones is really, really scary in this comic. Um, I, yeah, I'm a Remender fan. Like, I, obviously, like I, I think this comic's great. Um, it's really, really unfortunate because mm-hmm. because Remender did a 25 issue run of Captain America leading up to Sam becoming Captain America, and then he got to do six issues before he was taken off the book and he left Marvel. It's really unfortunate that he wasn't able to complete his plans to have the new Black Captain America that he wanted to do, and it really sucks. I still think this is a great first volume. I really, really want to know what we're going to get after this, though. Yeah, because this sure. is a very like I think it's a good book. I think it's a pretty standard book for, in terms of superhero comics. The art's exceptional. Stuart Eminem is such a talent, and the action in this book is so good. Um, I think it's really funny. I think I think he writes a great Sam. Like he's like, and he writes a great Cap. Like, what are you having frills? I said no frills on this mission. Yes. Like it, it's it's a really great superhero comic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, normally I'm more critical of Remender's work. I'm not the biggest fan of his. I do enjoy I do enjoy his work. I Acknowledge he's a, a great writer. The only time when I first started reading this book, I was like, okay, it felt a little slow. But then as the book started picking up, as the story started picking up, and it's like when uh, uh, Lucas, the kid that they say from uh, Hydra, turns on Sam and shoots him and says, Hail Hydra, I'm like, oh, Ooh. okay. Because when the book starts, it's like, okay, standard paid by numbers. Here comes Captain, new Captain America. Hydra's like, you're not the real captain. He's like, bitch, yes, I am kicks their asses and then it's like we gotta save the kid doomsday weapon and then they find out oh he was there voluntarily and Misty, when Misty Knight shows up it's like it it started slow and I don't mind it at first I'm like okay. what, a, what a crazy inhuman power the, yeah. your blood has the ability to make people sterile I know that's, yeah. some, that's some crazy shit Told you, man. And, and then Hydra's like hey we're just gonna be make sure this entire we're gonna Turn the entire world sterile because f uh, uh, except for few f all y'all. They want to own the future. They want yeah, Hydra yeah, to own is, the future. Yeah, this was definitely one of those Remender books where, um, like the only time I could like see like Remenderisms where it's like super critical about something and it's like very dark and sad is with Batrock, but everything else is like no, that's Sam Wilson. I love that. Sam Wilson is hopeful and. <laughs> This is a untraditionally not dark Rick Remender book, which is why I think, which is why I think it's great. And again, I'm really sad that he wasn't able to explore this more because it's him doing something he's not normally normally doing. Yeah, yeah, he was like just reading up on the backstory of Sam Wilson in this book because I didn't know Sam parents died. Like his dad was shot in the streets of New York, and then a year later, his mom was murdered. Yeah, both of his parents were murdered within a year. It's like. And Sam had to raise his his brother his brother and sister. I was like, "Wow, that is some dark shit." Someone and his, like, his father was a sermon, and like, and mm-hmm. in, in all the darkness, like he only just like he thinks about his father and how like you just got to be positive. You got to try like, to with, do your best with that type of backstory. I feel, especially with Remender writing it, that it's easy. It is way too easy for him to make like a super cynical, super dark, super just. Uh, essentially a regular i don't want to say regular because that's i feel that's a little that's really putting on a thing but a regular rick remender book yeah where it's like super dark cynical and shit's gonna go bad because deal with it whereas yeah. with sam still being hopeful and he's still like no i'm going to put the work in like when he's when zemos is about to stab him and he grabs a sword and punches and like hits him with the hilt he's like hey my hands hurt but i need to do this thing so i can save people yeah that's like this. Is, it was. It's. I know this is an older Remender book, but it was like a breath of fresh it's air. It's not that old. It's only six years old. Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right I know this is, okay. This is four. All right. Well, this is a Remender book with a lot of hope in it. And normally, when we read Remender books or the books that I've read, they're very sad. Mm-hmm. And I really like this. Uh, yeah, I think he does a great job of like putting Sam in a situation where we, we really watch him weigh that. I, I love that, you know, it's, it's built up over the issues in the background, Sam's desire to one day have a family and that mm-hmm. that is being put at stake now. Um, and the way that he, he willingly goes in, like, I'm going to have to get close and I'm going to, I'm going to probably lose that, but everybody else needs to have that opportunity. And I think that's a really nice, 
cool way to measure that in this uh, book. I think he does that really well. I think one of my favorite issues still remains the one where Sin's messing with him because I love seeing him trapped in all the art of his history. And, and how like the that. Red Skull made him and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah I, think that's, I think that's really, really great. I think it's also really nice for readers who are less familiar with Falcon to have that. Um, explored mm -hmm. uh, because it's giving you ideas of, of his past, even if it's not, you know, like since not telling you the whole truth or that kind of shit. Um, yeah, um, the, my boy on. Armadillo, oh, real quick, my boy Armadillo shows up from the Mark Gruenwald run. Uh, and that's the run where Armadillo, uh, his wife gets captured and then he goes to steal something from the Avengers compound. And instead of fighting Captain America, Captain America just talks to him and he's like, hey, can I just help you get your wife? And it's the same guy. And he's still a good mm -hmm. guy in this comic too. Yeah, he's like, I know, I know you don't really want it to go this yeah, way. He's yeah. like, Antonio, what good is being human if you lose your soul? And I'm like, damn, there's, there's a reminder. There he is. That's some good shit. Uh, uh, he goes like, oh yeah. Um, I, I want to talk about that uh, uh, sin scene because even I was believing her for a hot second. I was down. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, is all the information I just been fed fake? Yeah, is, like, it's, is, is Sam, is Sam really this bad person that sent that what? Cause you know, cosmic cube, we all read secret empire. We all read Steve Rogers, Captain America. When you have red skull in the cosmic cube, things don't go very well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh shit, is is he really a bad guy? Or but this this was this was before that. This is before that. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. was before that. So this is, Secret Empire in many ways is is taking from that that concept, uh, that mm -hmm. idea. But like it is very similar in that same way of like I I made you for a purpose and you you just don't understand you are that purpose. Yeah. Uh, um, that same trick. I had a question for those of you who read the Nick Spencer run. Yeah. Um does the Misty Knight plot thread go anywhere in that run or does he or does nick spencer drop it uh she shows up she's so so they're dating but the but the plot thread about her not being a member of shield isn't there oh uh, yeah because that, that was that, weird that the, relevancy, the relevancy of that isn't part of it because the secret wars wipe away um mm -hmm. but she's she's dating sam uh in nick spencer's run it's too bad i wanted to see where that would go <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, like, they're, they're very different takes on what the story is. Again, like, Nick Spencer's run is, like, from the get-go talking about, you know, the the kind of racism that's out there towards Sam, and it's him and Missy kind of, Missy encouraging him through it. Very much like, think of Missy, like, the way Sarah operates in the in the show, um, mm -hmm. as kind of his his confidant and rock through mm -hmm. it. Um, that's, that's what her dynamic is there. Uh, so... It's 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 kind of carrying on some things, but it definitely drops that like not a part of Shield thing that's not relevant to the story. Yeah. Um, I love I love Nomad. <laughs> I love Ian Rogers. I really don't like that. That I mean, I get it. Like certain characters get made and then they get tossed to the wayside. But Ian Rogers has not been around in five years. Yeah, uh, I don't know where that kid is. He's Steve Rogers' son. You know, there's Steve Rogers has a son they don't talk about. Um, my honestly, my favorite couple pages is is when Sam infiltrates a Hydra base and Nomad's undercover, and Sam throws the shield and misses everyone. Yeah. And, and the Hydra agent's like, "Dude, you missed by a mile." And they just have a <laughs> quick conversation. It's like, "You ever thrown this thing before?" He's like, "Actually, you just missed it. I just killed. I just beat up a bunch of dudes in that room. It was pretty." sick it's like yeah I'll, I'll take your word on it that's a really great sequence. it's that's like movie cinematic hilarity uh i love i love that one because at first i was like oh shit a hydra agent is this like a classic because you know how in some movies or in some uh franchises where you have like you get like a new hero and then the bad guy is like hold on hold on you're doing this all wrong you have to do this and then they automate and then they bring about their downfall i thought yeah. Rick Remender was setting me up for that but then it's like no it's me ian rogers i'm like oh okay um Still it's impossible it it's impossible to, t to to see on my tiny phone, but there are some truly exceptional splash pages of battles happening where there's like seven masters of evil fighting Nomad and, and, and Captain America. And it's stunning. And you got Taskmaster and you got like Crossbones. You got all these people, beautiful art, uh, uh, all these flashbacks of looking at Falcon as like in like growing up and stuff. So good. Like, I'm yeah. just, I'm so sad that we didn't get more of this because, like, the Nick very, Spencer uh, runs very good. Very deadly class idea about how yeah. he does the flashbacks. Yeah. Um. The the scene with the birds where there's actually like a hundred birds. Those are all actually different types of birds that Stuart Eminem researched. So there are literally like a hundred different birds on the screen at once. It's, it's except exceptional work went in this book. Uh, Misty Knight shows up. She's fantastic. Yes. Um. Yeah. I just, I, I miss Rick Remender writing superhero comics. <laughs> um. I've had a lot of positive things to say. I will say one criticism uh, of this that, that stood out to me that uh, didn't the last time I read it, but like uh, I, I'm thinking about it differently now. And like, there's a line in here that has not aged well um, coming out of Sam Wilson's mouth. And it's when he's fighting Batroc and it's uh we've still got the best prison system. Oh yeah. America. Oh, yeah. Like, 
Oh boy, the yeah. black Captain America would one hundred percent not say that. Yeah, Whoa. no, that's true. Uh, and that's that's rough. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a rough line that does not age well. And I have to acknowledge that that's that's definitely the case because I read that and I'm like, oh shit, no, no, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I read even that. When I read, even when I read that, I'm like, uh, no, we do not. Yeah, and this so. is and this is one of those times where like uh, you know like I, I'm really glad Rick Remender wrote this comic. I I think everything else about it great. Uh, I, I enjoy a lot of it. This is definitely one of those times where I look at it and I go, that's a white guy writing this character. And this is one of the reasons why I definitely want a black voice on that Captain yeah. America movie. 100% because 100%. no black writer would have written that even at that time. Yeah. Um, so the last time uh, Nomad Ian Rogers showed up, it was in secret, uh, secret wars and the hail Hydra tie in. And oh, I, yeah, oh, I read that book. That yeah. was, that that was it. This last time he yeah. was a comic. As far as we're concerned, that dude was erased in secret wars then. Yeah. 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 If I ever read comics, I'm going to bring him back. <laughs> I'll bring him back. <laughs> that dude got his throat slit, and then because he grew up in another dimension and he knows Captain he America. He has a certain gel. He has a certain he has a gel. gel that's in his suit <laughs> yeah. and will heal him as long as it's touching his body. That's wild. Whatever. I'm, I'm in for it. I, Thanks, thought was, I thought he was dead. <laughs> Oh yeah. Everybody did. That, oh, yeah. that was the thing. Yeah. You're right. Zemo rules in this book. Again, like this is like one of the reasons like, like I'm glad Zemo's the way he is. In uh, I love when he turns it around on Zemo and, and, and Zemo's like, uh, cause he says, I'm not my father. When, when he will, you learn this lesson. And then he turns it around. He's like, I'm not my father. When will you learn this yeah, lesson? Yeah. Throws the sword through him. And he's like, Holy oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, uh, cool. Sam Wilson's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that, that's that book. I'm glad we got to read it. Just a little slice of some Sam Wilson comic action. Yeah. 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 Ben, uh, do you know what you want? Uh, unfortunately, no. I'll let you guys know. Cool. But we know what we're doing next week is we are going to be reviewing the Mitchells versus the Machines. Oh, that's coming out. Nice. Connected. On Netflix uh, next week. So check that out. I'm so excited. I love Lord Miller. They're the best. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, of course, check out our other shows, uh, such as Conversation, uh, which is my uh, solo show where I recently just interviewed um, Helen O'Hara from the Empire Film Podcast. Whoop, whoop. Um, and next week I will have another guest. I think it's Michael Tanner. Um, but I will double check that. We'll find from out. The grand, from the Grand Geek Gathering, if it is. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Let me just sit here and talk to you a bit about liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Can you please? Thank you, Mag. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Mag. <laughs> Good night to Mag. Thank you, as Number always, one. for doing this. <laughs> Number one fan. But remember, guys, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and you can get access to a lot of cool stuff. I mean, you have it anyway, but it helps to subscribe. Um, you can get our Fake Nerds Watch of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is now done and in the can. Last episode coming soon. You can check out our Basement Arcade series, which we just talked about doing another one soon on this show during our review. Basement Arcade Pause Menu which is another show we do. Um, Fake Nerd Book Club, which exists in video and audio. All that is here. It's all here on this channel. This little box, you can find it. Just click on something. I'm sure I put something for you to click on here. You can't put me in a box unless I'm already in one. Um, so that thing, or if there is a thing, I don't, I don't know. Let's 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 make it through this pandemic, and once again, we have masks. Uh, we, we still have masks. I know. I'm just going to keep saying it until we figure out what we're going to do with the rest of that fabric. We don't have a lot left, but... Make a dress. Eh, it's too short for a dress. Mm. Um, unless it's for me, and I just want to be sexy. It's, for you, a dress is a skirt, because it's cause you're tall. <laughs> um, we also have a Patreon, and we also have a Tee Public Patreon. There's an exclusive shirt there, guys. Mike Matola's cat shirt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, there's a cat on the screen for you, audio listeners. <laughs> uh, Mike Matola's shirt... That allows you to share with Ben the honor of being Stephen King's best friend. You ten dollars, and you get it. Uh, thank you to Mike Matola for designing that. Um, Patreon, T Public, cool stuff there. Linked below. Website linked below. But it's www.fakenerdpodcast.com. Find tons of cool stuff up there, such as links to everything. All links below. Thank you to everyone who listens. Thank you to everyone who watches. I know a couple people have dropped into this live this live uh, stream throughout the night. Uh, Mag, who watches the whole live stream every week. I, it's, sure. it's unbelievable to me. I love and, you so much. Um, thank you to everyone who listens to the show and, and have supported us uh, through that. Thank you to Jeremy Vellucci um, for our theme musics. And, of course, Jeremy Vellucci. You can find him at Jeremy Vellucci Keyboards. 
And you can find this podcast, Suburban Proctologist. Find that on iTunes or Facebook.com slash Suburban Proctologist Official or Instagram at Subproc Podcast. Thank you to Mike Patola, who designed the shirt that allows you to, in the exclusive club that is only available to Ben Magnet as of this moment, of Just being Stephen King's best friend. But you get that shirt and you get in that club. Exclusive. You can find him, Mike Patola, the wonderful Mike Patola at Mike Patola on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Fake Nerd Podcast on all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Fake Nerd Guys at gmail.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us personally, I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Ben. You can find me getting good at Mortal Kombat 10 to prepare for Basement Arcade at Ben Magnet. Tw- blah, 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 blah. Good God. Ben Magnet 27 on Instagram and Twitter. And also, I write for OldSchoolGamerMagazine.com. A new article should be coming up this week. I started writing it earlier today sparks uh you can find me having to do a lot of schoolwork at sparks witty on instagram and twitter s-p-a-r-k-z witty and ryan you can find me potentially watching the live action mortal Kombat tv show mortal Kombat conquest this week because i'm very interested in it because i hear it's awfully fun at dj tony snark i forgot they made that subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music and Podcasts, and, of course, Pandora. Rate and review wherever you get us. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. Until next week, guys. Finish him! He's gonna suck his soul out. <laughs>